Owen is here. And I'm gonna teach you how to get into the fucking moment to become present and to grow in your spirit in this video. Now, what we're gonna be doing is going into exercises. So this isn't gonna be so much information, but this is gonna be calling upon you to actually transform today. You'll notice that this video is several hours and that might intimidate you, but it shouldn't. What should intimidate you is you spending the rest of your fucking life trapped deeply inside your head, being yanked around like a little fucking puppet by society, by biological drives, by ego and self-image, instead of actually waking up and becoming proactive in your own life. So this video right here is gonna be a tutorial on how to get present to the moment, and it is gonna be based on the work of people like Eckhart Tolle, Eastern philosophy in general, many great spiritual coaches, which I've had over the years, and it's gonna distill this information for you so that when you do these exercises, you're gonna get so far out of your own head, you'll never be able to imagine what it is like to go back to your previous life. Now, like I mentioned, what you're gonna be learning here is based on the work of people like Eckhart Tolle and Eastern philosophy in general. Buddhism, Zen, you might have heard about these topics. What do they mean before we launch into this? Well. What it means is that when you get your head out of continual thinking about the past and how you're frustrated and the places that you've been victimized and the places that it didn't go perfectly, when you can also get your mind away from ruminating and dwelling on the future like a little fucking hamster that can't stop and you allow your mind to rest perfectly right in the center of that, you thread the needle right into what is exactly in front of you right now what will begin to happen is that you access a dimension of yourself that you never knew was possible. Immediately you'll feel at peace. You'll feel happier. You might even feel blissful. You'll have access to the sub-knowledge that your mind has and instead of having to overthink it and instead of being dragged around by your emotions, you're gonna make decisions and speak from presence. Really what we're accessing here, in my opinion, is what a caveman would have accessed when hunting down a fucking woolly mammoth. So if you're somebody who wants to make millions of dollars Say that you're a man, you wanna crush it with girls, you wanna go out to a club and be the center of attention. Let's say that you wanna be somebody who's really happy, a source of great energy, somebody who isn't needy, somebody who's in the flow, maybe one of the best public speakers in the world, one of the best gamers in the world, somebody who makes incredible business decisions, somebody who is lethally fucking effective. Then I hope that you can really, really enjoy this video because it's gonna teach you to access who you really are. I want to draw your attention to just different things that I've learned here, okay? We'll go through a couple of different things here. So you've seen a lot of infield, and now I want to draw your attention onto different things. I wanna just make you aware of different channels. Oftentimes there's different channels that we're just simply not aware of. And until you've had your attention put on those channels, you just don't know. So you always, what did I say? What's the big question you always gotta be asking yourself? What else? what else, right? So what channels are you not aware of? Like, say that we just go completely quiet right now for a minute, let's just go totally quiet. What do you hear? Air conditioning, did you notice before? You didn't, right? Most channels that you'll see are very subtle, but very real. Just because you didn't hear the air conditioner a minute ago, doesn't mean it wasn't real. Maybe it didn't have a big factor, it's just it's a fucking air conditioner, but then again, what if there was no air conditioning in this big building, right? So that being the case, you know, it's just an analogy, it doesn't make the next thing, I'm gonna, by the way, just because I made that analogy, doesn't make the next thing that I'm gonna say true. Do you get that? Yeah. Yeah. It just is illustrating a potential point that I'm trying to make to you that you ultimately have to evaluate. But the point is that I'm trying to make, which you have to decide on what you think of, and you shouldn't even make a firm decision even right now, is this. There's different energies or factors that are influencing you and your behavior. A major understanding is realizing that most of your thoughts are not your own. You don't have as much free will as you think. And you're kind of a bit of a fucking automaton that's easily manipulated. <laughs> the sooner you realize that, the sooner that you can actually have a bit of proactive control. Most people are being influenced and their thoughts are comprised of what? Biological drives, which as much as a biological drive is you, is it really you? You're so caught up in the fulfillment of your own biological drives and yet, someday you're gonna die, so it's not that significant in a way of looking at it. In other ways, you're the most significant in the world, right? The paradox we talked about earlier. But in a way of looking at it, you're not significant. 
if there's some tree in the middle of the Amazon jungle that gets chopped down, is it, is it really impacting your day? Is it going to fuck your day up? I mean, thinking about it now kind of sucks, but, you know, right? but it's not going to fuck your day up. And yet, it'll fuck your day up so much if your biological drives aren't fulfilled. And yet, what's the ultimate significance of that? You'll be dead and not remember all this shit soon anyway. Does it really matter? How about social conditioning? How much is just social conditioning? Ideas that have been pounded in your head. They're not your thoughts. They're pounded in your head. Something as basic and simple as, all you need is love. Do, 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 do. You know, and then your girlfriend dumps you and you're like, I need love. And it fucks you up. That's an obvious one. Processed foods, celebrity endorsements, all the different cognitive biases, <laughs> right? It's so crazy. So that being the case, when you are thinking how much of it is fulfillment of biological drives, how much of it is social conditioning. From there, how much of it is ego? You want to climb Mount Everest, you don't want to do Malibu. How much of it is ego gratification? So from there, what other influences are there? Most guys in here, if it's a group of men, care a lot more about men's rights than women's rights. You do. You hear about women's rights, it pisses you off. You hear about men's rights, you love it. Why? Why do you care more about men's rights than women's rights? Because you're right and they're wrong. You're so right and they're so wrong. And we're so great and fuck them, right? Yeah, even though you're human and you have the exact same biases. The exact same self-interest, the exact same type of social condition coming to you, although there's a varied version of it, right? So we want to think past that. So for me, what waking up is, is finding out what's really you. And what I've experienced is something that Eckhart Tolle talks about in this cheesy little book <laughs> called The Power of Now, okay? So there's this old German man. He wears a vest. <laughs> he doesn't move much. Kind of looks like an older version of your grandpa. So he'll kind of come in and he'll teach you about the, the, the power of now, okay? The power of now. And if you read that and you like it, you can read the sequel. You know what that's called? It's called A New Earth. Mm -hmm. So you're going to find out about the now on the new earth. Makes sense, right? Shit, I mean, it says in the book, it must be true. Okay, so right off the bat, when you hear about things like presence, immediately you should be wildly skeptical of that, okay? If you just take that hook, line, and sinker, I feel bad for you. The only reason that you should believe that is if you have experienced it yourself, but even that's not enough because your mind can't be trusted, right? So it doesn't matter if you experienced it. Who cares what you fucking experience? Look at all the dumb shit people believe that you hear about. You're like, this motherfucker's dumb. You don't think they experienced that? So you've got to even go a little bit deeper than that, right? So that being the case, I want to, there's, there's different channels, right? So one of them is, say, presence. It's the channel that your mind is in, okay? To me, presence, that's where you can actually start bringing up proactive thoughts. That's where you can actually have a thought that's your own. Although weirdly in presence, do you think that much? <laughs> kind of, right? But a lot of it is awarenesses that are your own. Now, if you look at me, I've say been doing, say, success with women for 15 years. Can you see where, as I've worked for, because you gotta remember, right? Most of you guys in this room have done it less than a year or two. This is like so crazy, right? When I'm, when I'm building my game out, by the way, how many years do you think I'm planning out building out my game? I'm thinking like five years ahead, right? As I know it sounds like crazy. I sound like all pompous right now. Like, oh, look at you. Peddly two years. I'm thinking five. Like this whole seven are so fucking pompous. So I'm already thinking of, um, of a couple years ahead. Like this is probably what I'd work on this year. This is what I'd work on next year. That's why I laugh at these guys. Like I just want a girlfriend right now. I'm like, God. Like you're on a journey, bro. Come strap in, motherfucker. Okay. So, so think about it like what you have is you have it to where like I'm thinking like say five years ahead. Say in, in, in my business, I'm thinking several years ahead. I'm thinking several decades ahead and maneuvering things in ways that might be favorable to that outcome. So that being the case, your you know, presence, you should not just believe in that point blank, but just become aware of it. So what presence means is that you have a space between thinking, past thinking and the future, right? And there's a place in between where you're not thinking about the past, you're not dwelling on the future, but you just stay present. It requires self-trust, and there's an awareness there where now your faculties are at your disposal. Okay, so you have it to where your direct faculties are at your disposal. But it's hard to get that because most of society, the energy is very dense, and it pulls you back in to a lot of ego-based thinking, a lot of biological drive-based thinking, 
Now, understand that, and there's a theory about this, some people even believe that if you eat a lot of foods that promote candida, that the candida hijacks your brain and makes you want more candida. Have you guys ever heard that? Or not candida, foods that will fuel the candida. So you're thinking, I want that food, and you eat it, but there's actually something hijacking your brain. There's energetic homeostasis in your body that makes you want to stay in this frenetic or dense or unconscious state that will manipulate your thoughts in that direction to keep you in reaction. And then when somebody comes along who knows how to push on that, now you're a puppet. Okay? You're a puppet. Okay? So, what I aim to show you in a lot of this stuff is how to cut the strings. But the first challenge is that most people don't want to stop being a puppet. There's your first challenge. Why is that? Because you're still run by your emotions. Right now, if I said, you're gonna be a puppet, but you're gonna fuck 110s right now, and get the best food, and get massaged the rest of your life, you'd take it. Now, you might say that you wouldn't take it, but then if I wheeled out all those things and just started doing it to you, right, like they had the girls fucking you, you wouldn't stop that process. So you're still a puppet. <laughs> so right off the bat, as long as you're there, you're still stuck in puppet land. Okay? You see that? So the same thought that wants to wake up, the same thought that wants to evolve, doesn't want it for the reasons that you think. What is the reason that most people want to become enlightened? There's two. What are they? Happy. To feel happy. Boy, pain. And to be superior to everybody. <laughs> the word enlightenment is a loaded word. You know what would be a better word for enlightenment? Just like a dumb, dumb, dumb. I'm a dumb, dumb, dumb. <laughs> but of course, slowly but surely, even that would take on a new consequence, like this fake, humble shit. I'm just a dumb, dumb, dumb. Look at me, you big shot. <laughs> so, most people want to become enlightened because they want to have better feelings and because they want to be cooler than their friends and become enlightened. They want it for the same reason they want to climb Mount Everest, right? When maybe instead of focusing on becoming enlightened, we could focus on just practically improving your life to where there's more proactivity in you, to where you generally feel a lot better, and to where the energy that you're bringing into the world is more contributive and positive and proactive and, and whatnot so that you're contributing something that you want, right? Pretty cool, right? Does that sound cool? Yeah. Okay, so I didn't hear a super enthusiastic response because I know you're still thinking about the 100 girls. <laughs> <laughs> I am too. <laughs> and anyone that say they're not is lying. So, but there's another part of you that may wish to, to have that proactivity. So we have to understand what is rutting us what are the different conventions that have got us trapped? What's got us stuck in our head? What is the majority of our, of our self-dialogue and thoughts and whatnot? And then we make a decision to rise above that. We make a decision not to be a puppet, but actually to be a proactive force. And the cool part of it, okay, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you something here. So you have present energy. And for most of us, present energy is the background and the physical world is the foreground. So most of your awareness is tied up in the physical world, and you kind of get in the zone a little bit. You ever heard that expression, get in the zone? Yeah. You get in the zone a little bit, that's in the background, okay? So what we want to do is we want to flip that and just see how it feels. Just see how it feels for a minute to where presence is your primary, the area, the primary area in which your awareness rests, and the physical is a little bit more on the periphery. What would be some advantages to being present to the moment as your primary mode of awareness, and the physical in the background. Okay, how much time do you waste on somebody else's agenda, such as looking at stupid shit online, checking your phone, how much time do you waste on things that are not serving you? Is it tremendous? Okay, so that's one advantage. How often do you waste thinking about your reputation not to say that reputation doesn't have value, but how often do you waste thinking about it? Like how much of your reputational concern is based on things that actually have an impact versus just your fucking ego? What do you think? Crazy, right? Let's get even weirder. All of you in this room, I hope, are making more money than you ever have. 
At the same time, a couple of you were like, fuck you. <laughs> but at the same time, has that extra money made you that much happier? I mean, I think it does. Let's not take away from it. Yeah. But like, like, how old are you? 42. 42. Has making more money made it to where you wake up every day and you're like, I got more? No, I get numb. You get numb to I'm it. Like losing gratitude as you get older. It's like, oh, I used to drive you know, this car. Now I got this car. Mm -hmm. so if I was in 20, I'm just like jerking off at it, looking every day. And now I'm like, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Isn't it crazy how that works, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's been all something about more money. Young people don't okay. understand that yet. Mm -hmm. Younger people don't understand that yet. <laughs> exactly. Next one, though. Let's go deeper. How about if you get sex? Let me ask you guys a question. Okay. Sex while you're having it, for me, is one of the best feelings in the world. I truly love it. Anybody that says they don't, <laughs> there's a point where people try to be so fucking enlightened, they become pompous. If you're telling me that you don't enjoy making love to a beautiful woman, you're a pompous motherfucker. You need to sit down and go away. Just don't even, don't even front. Look, Eckhart Tolle's got Kim. Just shut the fuck up, okay? Don't even give me the shit. That said, though, that said, as much as I love having sex, one of the great pleasures of life, to be honest with you, many of the best nights of my life were with a woman in bed. That said, have you had more pleasure or pain in total from the pursuit of sex and everything surrounding sex and the breakups than the pleasure that you got from the sex itself? How much percent do you rate the pleasure from sex of that 30 minutes you're pumping away and being with a cool woman you're connecting with? <laughs> Let's not forget about that. And versus the pain surrounding breakups, approach anxiety, the ego aspects of it. What do you rate the ratio? 95. 10 pleasure, 90 pain, right? <laughs> well, to be fair, that's why we're here. So, you know, maybe some other people would have a different take and we should always think about that bias. That being the case, let's stop and consider how much pleasure you actually got from it. Okay, interesting, right? Does that mean you should quit? No, it's not necessarily about the pleasure. Learning to be better with women could just be about growing up. It could be about becoming an adult. So it's not a bad thing. Say in business, out of all the headaches that I've had from business, do you think that the sensory pleasure equates to the pain that I've had to build my company? What do you think? No. The pleasure ratio is about 3% to 97% pain. Mm. Wow. With all the endless shit. What did Winston, Tr Winston Churchill say about history? What's the definition of history? It's one damn thing after another. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> he's seen some shit though. <laughs> I don't, luckily I haven't seen that much shit. You know, I didn't have to fight down the Third Reich or anything. Just like some weird CNN thing. <laughs> Could always be worse, right? So, you know, I gotta, I gotta, like Winston Churchill's gotta deal with like, you know, millions dead, I gotta deal with Max getting slapped by a girl with green hair. <laughs> it's not so bad, right? But, <laughs> but, and I remind myself that every day. So, but, by the way, that thing with Max, you guys ever see that video? That video? Yeah. He had just joined RSD. He wasn't yeah. even fully hired yet and he had to deal with that. That's commitment. Now, okay, so imagine being him. He's like, I'm getting my dream job. <laughs> so, okay, now going from there, what you have, okay, so you have the actual pleasure from the business is not going to pan out. Pleasure from sex is not going to pan out. Pleasure from ego and reputation is not going to pan out. For every, like, you know, like people will be like, oh, Tyler, he must, he, it must really go to his head having everyone like sucking his dick and da, da For all the fucking like one, for the one random dude that will come up to me at a restaurant, it's like, well, thanks for the YouTube videos. How much fucking reputational shit have I gone through between the game? I, do you guys realize I will be sitting in a movie theater one day, potentially, and I'll be like, yay, Transformers 7. And they're gonna be like, this preview is going to come and say, like, they came together to Project Hollywood. Mystery, yeah. Neil, yeah. And Tyler. <laughs> okay? So, so even as far as like what you could say of like, oh, people love you, like even the reputational shit, it doesn't pan out. Look, even for a mother having a kid, to have that beautiful son or daughter, she's got she's to eject a giant human. It's, I mean, it's not giant relative to a human, but it's giant relative to what should become out of her vagina, and she's gotta eject that while in excruciating pain, and then wake up in the middle of the night while this little creature, and by the way, you know like, newborn babies are so cute. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're not at all. Who said that? What liar said that? Do you know? Okay, the most important thing that you got out of this event today 
Did you know that the baby comes out with a cone head? <laughs> no one told me! <laughs> nobody told me! Why the fuck did nobody tell me about this? Most of you don't even know that you need specific maternity insurance for that not to count as a pre-existing condition. Did you know that? First, no one tells me that. 50K later, no one tells me about the fucking cone head. Okay, my kid comes out with a cone head for having I'm going, little baby, he's gonna have a cone head. Well, you know, shit, he could still live a normal life with this cone, right? I didn't know. The skull goes in like the alien movie, like alien, like, okay, all that. And it, and it comes out to shoot out easier with the cone head. Didn't know. No one ever told me. <laughs> no one also ever told me that the way that they deliver babies in the modern medical system actually makes it harder for the kid to come out. In my second kid, the kid was flipped and they're like, oh, we're gonna give it Pitocin, we're gonna do a C-section, but I watched a documentary called The Business of Being Born and they said the mom needs to move around and I argued with the doctor for half an hour to let the mom move around. Okay, my baby mama, lovely woman. And, ba and, then, and then she got up, moved around, the baby came out. No C-section required. If she'd had to get a C-section, I would have had to fucking handle all this extra shit for six weeks. Not accepted. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, by the way, part of spiritual enlightenment to me is that you can be a fucking idiot. Do you guys know that? Okay? So idiot jokes like that, including ones that make you sound petty and asinine and immature, to me that's part of enlightenment. I'm not enlightened, but it's part of the journey to spiritual growth. That would be a better way of putting it. Why is that? Enlightenment is like a place you can achieve. I believe that anybody who immediately believes in enlightenment is an idiot. <laughs> Why would you believe that just because you're told about it? You can intuit what it would be like to be very present, but in what world do you believe that because some guy said so? That's not for you to know right now. We don't know the answer to that right now. We're not in a position to know that. But you want to know, don't you? Don't you wish I'd just give you the answer? Yeah, no. I wish someone would too. That's how I know you do. Yeah, yeah. I wish someone would go, oh, and it's like, look, fucking, here's this fucking thing. It's gonna, okay? That'd be the shit, dude. Like, imagine someone would tell you the meaning of life right now. How cool would that be? You just knew right now. But people will pay money to be told what the meaning of life is. A buddy of mine said this. He said, one day a year, the whole world should get together and cry and go, we don't know what the fuck we're here. What a fucking rock. <laughs> okay? That'd be more authentic. So, <laughs> okay, now I had a major, I had a major um, point I was going to make here. I got a bit distracted. Can you guys help me? What, what, what track was I going on here? Some very important points here for us. The cone head, the baby. Oh, yes. Okay, okay, we got it. What we get out of it. So, even for a mother, she has to deliver the baby and she has to have that baby breastfeed. Like my son Dylan was biting her tit. It was like really brutal, okay? Biting, you should see Dylan, he's a madman. You guys see him on Instagram? Mm -hmm. He's a madman. So this madman kid is biting his mom's tit, is kind of bleeding a bit and she, you know what I'm saying, right? And then she's gotta be waking up every couple hours. You gotta put like, what's it cost to raise a kid in this economy? A Is that it? Mm -hmm. Living in the wrong place. Okay, is it only 250K to raise a kid to 18? <laughs> It's got to be like two mil. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, we don't know, and clearly I could be pompous, but okay. So, I mean, it's a lot, okay? I mean, 250K, I guess if you said 18 years and it was an extra like 2,000 a month, um, 24K times 18, I don't know. I guess, what's 24K times 18? But sometimes it goes past 18 years, right? I know. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be conservative. Okay, so what is 24,000 24, times 18? Anyone know? 450K. And that's if you're spending just the 2K on the kid. So it depends on where, on where you're at. And if the kid fucking gets the fuck out at 18, well, he could kick it out when he's younger. <laughs> right away. So, and by the way, I believe jokes like that are about spiritual growth. Do you guys see that? Yeah. The joke about kicking the kid out to me is spiritual growth. Why? Don't take life too seriously. Don't take life too seriously. I'm not trying to play this enlightened character. Enlighten, is enlightenment about playing a, a spiritual stereotype or is it about being present? Okay, in fact, sometimes paradoxical jokes, what do paradoxical jokes remind us of? A paradox and a joke, joke raise our mood, raise your vibration, so to speak. A paradox, something ununderstandable, actually can drive presence. Okay, so that's why I incorporate that into my life. Now, going forward, we realize that much of life will not yield the pleasure that we expect. Does that mean to give up on the project of life? I don't agree with that. In fact, for somebody who believes that they'll be reincarnated again and again until they let go, and then they just sit there meditating all day, I actually believe that if that were true, which I have no idea, but if it was, I believe that actually they're delaying their enlightenment by doing that. That's my opinion. What's the counter argument though? Always acknowledge the counter argument. What's the counter argument to that? 
It's really obvious, guys. Come on. The counter argument is you're just using that as an excuse to indulge in materialism and so on and so forth. Like religion, like with sin and stuff, right? Like, re like going to heaven, they're like, oh no, you're using it as an excuse that heaven doesn't exist in order to commit these sins. Yeah, I can see that. So do you see though, so always think the counter argument. Why do you think I believe that we have to engage with life to become more present and to grow as opposed to just detaching and detaching and detaching and detaching? I believe that the major lessons that we get about presence come through engaging with life. So I believe it's very important to get good and skilled in these different areas, but that while the material payoffs are nice, that is ultimately gonna be the growth in presence. And this is why you'll see guys take and say learning success with women, they'll say, well, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to get better at this or to say grow a business or to get better in your professional career or to get fit or whatever it be. I'm not fit, but I wanna be fit. <laughs> so they'd say it's not worth it. Like for me to get fit, isn't worth it from a material standpoint. I don't care enough about how I look to just get fit and to drive all those hours in the gym. But what could I get from it? Health, better, health. better health, maybe be a better speaker, yeah. have, a, have a stronger presence, yeah, live a longer life, contribute more. Maybe being in the gym, the act itself builds presence. You guys see that? Yeah, yeah. So we wanna be building presence, but what we do is we have to find that background of being in the zone relative to most people where presence is in the foreground. We want to flip that. And then when we flip that, now all of a sudden, there's some proactivity there. That's just my opinion though. By the way, when I say that, just because I stumble up here to the front with a Starbucks tea <laughs> and a crowd and a camera, does my opinion about the flipping of the presence from the background <laughs> to the foreground, does that mean that it's true? No. That said, having a crowd that does pay to hear what I have to say, does it imply a degree of credibility? Yes. Yes. A degree, a degree. Is there cases of people that have a big crowd and, and, and a high reputation and expertise that are really accurate? Are there cases of that? Yes. Are there cases of people who have a big crowd but are wrong about everything, followed by a bunch of fucking dummies also real? Are there cases of that? Yes. So the big question is, are you guys learning from the expert or are you the dummies? Right. Well, all you gotta do is flip the fucking presence from the background to the foreground, and then you're good to know. It'll all make sense then, right? Now again, to me, jokes like that are part of inner growth. You see that? Okay, you guys catch that? Okay, now, so moving forward, for a moment, I want you to allow your mind to get very still. Is your mom, how long, who here was able to keep it still almost the entire time? Put your hand up. Great. A lot, of the, a lot of these ideas I'm trying to spit at you, by the way, are meant to point out paradox to help you get a little bit more present. Now from there, who here found that as you try to make it still, you struggle to do so? Okay. The honest people just put their hands up. Teasing, but I'm also not teasing. Now, from there, we have to learn how to get present. So the first one that Eckhart Tolle would teach is the breath. People taught that before Eckhart, to be fair. But he, he was the first guy that I found. So to me, it's all Eckhart. <laughs> and to all you, it's me. I came up with the breath. <laughs> now, what we have, so let's look at it. The breath is a constant, is a constant it, it, it's a constant which reminds us of presence, okay? Certain things remind us of presence, like big open spaces. That's why I love to live in places with big view. People who are very present can help us to get more present. Focusing on the breath helps. A sound, like a constant sound, like an ohm or a ding helps. Some people use crystal bowls like, like that. I'd love to bring that in my teaching someday. It's fucking whack as fuck. Super pompous, like look at the bowl. Yeah, look how spiritual we are. But I do like it. So um, that being the case, let's give a minute to focus on the breath, okay? Deep breath in, I'll count it for you. One, two, Three, four, five, six. Hold it for three. One, two, three. Release it for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I want you to think of anything stressing you. And I want you to breathe it in and feel that stress, but when we do the release, I want you to let it out, okay? 
Breathe in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold the stress in. Release it, let it go. Okay, some people, I believe this is called pranic breathing. My old coach Glenn really hammers on it, it's amazing. Okay, now, I want you to notice something. Think of the stress that you carry, the tension, the unconsciousness, the frenetic energy. How much more positive feelings can you feel by just releasing it in even one breath or even just getting present for even a second? I mean, we barely, you know, some people do like a, a month long meditation retreat or some shit, right? We did, we did presence for like 13 seconds. <laughs> how, much, how much better do you feel right now and be honest, by the way, because some people will feel worse, some people will feel no difference. Who here feels way better just right now from just being present for a second and releasing some tension than, say, from something awesome happening? Put your hands up right now. Okay, so some people are feeling that. Now, where you're going to see the shift is when presence goes from the background to the foreground. So something like having sex with a really hot girl or eating like an amazing food, when you're not present, you need something very stimulating to penetrate through the cloud that you're in. Do you catch that? You need a dopamine spike to stimulate you. To penetrate through that cloud that you're in. Are you seeing that? Now, what happens when we shift presence from the background to the foreground is that we don't need as much stimulation and we realize that we're already more at peace and feeling pleasant, happy, free, and we don't need that level of stimulation. But here's the paradox, okay, Zen paradox. When you're already feeling amazing, now you're not getting your time wasted by people that are manipulating you and outside influences as much. You'll still waste massive amounts of time. I do myself all the time, okay? Instagram DMs, pretty <laughs> addictive. That's very, very addictive, but Regardless, I've had some, I'm a little further up the road than I was in the past, which is nice. So let's just look at that to help you. So what you have is when presence is in the foreground, you don't need as much stimulation and you're more likely to achieve those outcomes because you're not wasting time, you're not disempowered, your focus isn't scattered, and then you can also, and here's the big one, you can actually be attuned to what you want rather than being brainwashed into what somebody else wants. This is the big one. So now, even if you are moving forward, you're not a hamster riding in a hamster cage or like a car spinning its wheels really fast in the mud. Maybe your wheels are even spinning a little less fast, but you're on the road moving forward. Maybe the hamster's not running as fast in the fucking cage, but it's moving forward for real, to an extent. Truth is, it's not binary, right? Sometimes you're on the, ca you're on the wheel, Sometimes you're on the road because that's growth. If you're all the way on the road, and then you'd probably vanish in an array of light or you would just become Eckhart Tolle's competitor and just destroy him. <laughs> okay, so you guys are like, is that what he's doing? I'm not, okay? Now, at all, I, and never could. Now, that being the case, again, on the breath. One, two, three, four, Five, six, hold it. Let the stress out. One, two. In one, two, three, four, five, six. Hold in any stress. Feel the stress. Let it out. So it's like it's like this bicycle wheel spinning, and you want to stop fueling it. That's what Eckhart would say a lot. Okay. You're spinning the wheel, spinning the wheel. Spin You're going to stop spinning the wheel.
Now let's look at another thing like extended sounds. So the one that they use a lot of times in spiritual growth, they call that OM. Okay? I, I personally find it distasteful to copy what I would see elsewhere, but yet the sound works. So let's just do it, okay? Breathe in, and on the way out we'll go OM. And I want you to notice how the sound affects your presence. Breathe in. One, two, three, four, five, six, and just go OM. I want you to think of presence. It's almost like dripping into, it's, it's like the present energy sort of drips into a cup. So you're not going to snap in presence right away, although there's ways of doing it. I find when I just jump on stage, it, it can happen for me from years of repetition of doing it, which is nice. But you want to notice there's different things that we use to get present, okay? It's kind of like a tutorial on how to get present. That way we can implement a lot of that infield stuff that you saw earlier today. So let's just look at this as a tutorial. So one way is the breath. What was the second way? The sound, right? Okay, that's cool. Now, another way, just take about five seconds to look at your hands. Just look at your hands. Look at the little tiny things in your hands. Look really, really closely at the carpet. It's probably like what your brain would do if you're on like mushrooms, right? You'd be like, the carpet's so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it's talking to me. Okay, look at the ceiling right now. A little paint on it, lights. You know, sometimes if you're watching at home, just look at some other shit in your room. Okay, look at, say, your arm. Look at the hairs on your arm, the little hairs that are there. Think about the fact that, like, just imagine the evolution, the millions of years, millions and millions of years that we've been evolving to even just be alive right now, right? It's, it's crazy. Feel into your inner body a sense of peace. Now again, let's look at all of them. Go to the breath, in. Let it out. Good. Now I'll do the sound. Deep breath in. Om. Now look at your hands again. Okay, so you hear a couple of giggles there. That means it's deepening a little bit. Is it deepening a bit? Yeah. <laughs> okay, now what you're going to do is I want you to think of something that just drives you crazy, okay? From this state. So we're going we're gonna to meddle your brain a bit here, okay? So think of something in RC that just really would piss me off. Like, do you guys, can you think of anything? People messing up your video. People mess up my video? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, that pisses me off. Oh, my God. Oh, God, you killed it for me now. Okay. How's this video going back there? Okay. All right. You nailed it. You nailed it. You nailed it. Okay, somebody pissed fucking fucked my fucking video and all the work that I put into it will be just gone forever. And the universe is ruined now without my video. It's over. My fucking video 
didn't get recorded properly. Fucking Spetty, fucking misplate. No, yeah, she did great, by the way. <laughs> fucking fuck. There's no video for me. All this shit. And the video is fucked. It's fucked. Because it matters a lot. More than you could ever say. <laughs> and I'm a balding ginger, too. Okay, let's just throw that in there. <laughs> throw it in there. Balding and that. <laughs> Fucking, like some fucking retard on YouTube. People see my shit, they don't get it. I get people to make it, oh, they're gonna say I'm a cult leader again. I'm not a cult leader! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Just from the power of now, man. <laughs> Me saying that, they're gonna think it more. Holding a Starbucks thing. Try to be all cool, and I'm drinking from Starbucks. <laughs> Fuck! I got no video, and even if I do, it'll get misinterpreted with my fucking Starbucks, okay? Fuck this. It matters a lot. It's over. <laughs> it's over! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what does that do to my mood now? What, what are you seeing in my state? Okay, I'm getting mad. It's, fuck this shit. <laughs> Go home, okay? So you see, okay? So now we're moving up a little bit, okay? Because the mind gets at you, doesn't it? Think of all the shit that pisses you off. Now, as you're seeing what mood I'm getting into now, remember, you're talking to a guy who ran around like a fucking maniac. Still does, to be fair. <laughs> who used to run around me? Okay trying to make my life, all my ducks line up in a row. It doesn't mean that I shouldn't have done that. I love that I did that. But at a certain point when you realize like this isn't yielding me the emotional result that I want and I kind of feel inauthentic anyway, I start looking at this weird shit, like this weird fucking weird, weird strangeness. I look at stuff like, okay, I start to look at stuff like this because I'm like, maybe I can control my state. Maybe I could be in control. But what are the levers here? How, what are the little nozzles to get in control? Okay, take a deep breath. Imagine like the tension just being blown out of you. It's like some weird dark spew and it's just blown out. Make the sound. Om. Drink the Kool-Aid. It's good for you. Good to go to heaven. <laughs> nice immediate clip for me. Then, okay, then what we do, look at your hands. Look at the fucking ar arms. Ceiling. Listen to subtle sounds in the room. It's like you're a hunter, right? Hunting down an animal. You're kind of alert, right? You're not stuck in this fucking Facebook reality. You're not gonna kill a fucking animal today, right? Go! Okay, we're gonna get, okay. Now, not too loud because it's late, we don't wanna get thrown out. Just start talking about weird shit that pisses you off how I did. The room is gonna sound really weird. Just start talking about some shit, just think of some shit right now that fucking pisses you fucking off, like me in the video, and it's over! It's over! And you're a balding ginger, and, and, at, and at the end of it, say you're a balding ginger too. So. <laughs> Okay, but say your worst, say the thing that pisses you off and some of your worst insecurities and just let it out in an angry way. Just do it right now from this state. Do it. Do it right now. Guys, that ginger thing kind of hurt. Now, from there, and I'm a balding ginger. And a, thank you. <laughs> okay. Now, I want you to think for a second about something you're really grateful for. Now, gratitude, by the way, is a huge increaser of presence. It really is. It, you'll. I want you to <clears throat> look. I'm. I'm not an easy sell on stuff like this. Okay. Like, as an entrepreneur. 
when I, when I see these people like, gratitude. <laughs> yeah, gratitude. When I see that, my immediate thought is, that's a demographic, it's a niche of these fucking people that are like, gratitude, okay? It's just a way of thinking. It doesn't necessarily make it accurate. But what you'll find is, when you're in your worst mood, what kind of energy has been triggered in you? Negative. Victim thinking, yeah. lack of gratitude. It's not that victim, th victim thinking is necessarily wrong. It actually can be pretty spot on. But unfortunately, oftentimes victim thinking puts you into a negative mood, you attract negative people, you put yourself in a negative situation to feed that beast. So what we do instead is we want to think of something that we're grateful for. So just right now think of something, take a nice deep breath and think of something you're very grateful for. Even if it's just your own fucking breath, by the way. You got another second alive. Now, the shift that you're going to notice, like we said, presence in the background to the foreground, is where when, when, when physical world is in the foreground, you crave the dopamine spikes, frenetic energy, and ego kicks and feelings of that physical experience. But when, the, when presence starts coming in the foreground, it's kind of weird. You ever have it where, where you're drunk and it, you feel the buzz of being drunk yeah. and you, what do you want to do? You just want to get more drunk, <laughs> right? Is it like that when you smoke weed? I never smoked weed before. Is it like that too? Like you smoke a blunt, you're just like, I want to get even more high, pass the blunt. Is that what it's like? Is it? Not sometimes. 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 Okay, so we, okay, we're going to nix the blunt one. Okay, the <laughs> marijuana crowd in here is like, you don't get to talk about that. You got to try it, motherfucker. You know, you know, <laughs> fair enough. Touche. So, but I have drank when I was in high school, early college. So that being the case, I know when I'm drunk, I started to get this buzz going, and rather than worrying about all this other shit, even you know how I look or anything, I kind of just want more of that buzz. Do you guys ever feel that way, or is that just me? Yeah. Okay, you just want to get more fucked up. Right now there's a point where you're too fucked up. <laughs> you're too, like, what have I done? <laughs> so where we want to get with presence is where, and this is what I love about presence, I believe it's very achievable. Like to me, it, like, one of the things I don't like about like, the enlightened master thing is it comes across like this guy doing some shit that you couldn't do. That shit kind of fucks me up to be honest. So for me, I just think of it like it's achievable by anybody. I think that we can grow in presence. So that being the case, you want to kind of get to the point where like you're not even so much worried about all this other stuff, you just want to be more present. But we can't get attached to it either, right? Because when you get attached to it, then you start thinking like, I'm losing my presence, right? Which then makes it worse. Okay. So, so you're starting to get drunk off presence. Who here feels like a light buzz off presence right now? Put your hands up. Okay, so you're starting to feel it a little bit. Now, who here, by the way, is like, I, I don't know what the fuck this guy's talking about. Put your hand up. Okay, so what that means is one of two things. A, that I am a cult leader, and <laughs> the shit that I'm saying is just so fucked, yeah. <laughs> and I'm preparing you for that, and later the Kool-Aid's gonna come in, <laughs> and they're just gonna wheel it out, and they're like, get more present, get more, okay, so that's one. And even this joke is just trying to disarm that now. Okay. Or what it means is that the mind is still dominating. Okay. So there what we get is actually into some intellectual understandings. Part of it is that our inner dialogue, when we identify with the inner dialogue rather than present energy, when the dialogue stops, we kind of, I don't know if this is the right way of putting it or not, but in a way, maybe it makes us feel like we're dying. So if you don't hear the thoughts, you're like, am I dead? What the fuck is this? <laughs> now in addition to that, you also want certain things. You're like, well, what's been driving me my whole life is to, to dominate, to succeed, to win. So how is not thinking gonna lead me to that outcome? So to a and another one too is a lack of self-trust actually. You think that if the dialogue stops, you might make a, a bad decision. So there's a number of different intellectual understandings that can help us to get present. So fighting up with presence, um, a lot of it is intellectually understanding what it is to buy in, but of course another part of it is actual shifts that we make. A lot of the time people, by the way, why when people want to get present, do they want to talk about presence for hours and hours? What is it, what is it that's doing that? The they want to get present to feel more happy, and they want to get present to be more enlightened. 
but you know, to a degree. I mean, there's, there's many reasons, right? There's, uh, we're all very complicated beings and so unique, all of us. <laughs> so that being the case, people will talk about getting presents hours on end because it's a way to feel like we're moving towards something, like we're learning something, and like we're gonna be more happy, more enlightened, more ego gratified. But at the same time, it's actually just staying in our comfort zone. It would be like talking about going out and meeting women and talking about it all day, but not really doing it as a way to feel like we're moving forward. So part of it is, part, but that said, talking about it is a value. We do need to recognize at a mind level what presence is and what it does for us. And particularly for somebody like myself, ultra competitive. I mean, cr so competitive, it's, it's really, it's like, whoa. Like when I see guys like Genghis Khan, I'm like, mm. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Not the unethical parts, but just the dominating parts. Not the unethical parts of Genghis Khan, but the dominating parts, right? Like just a worldwide, like when I think about a worldwide global domination, it just makes me really happy. You ever imagine like, just like the whole world is like named your name, like everybody's named Owen, and all girls are named Owenette, and like then you just eat everything, like you're Thanos, and you eat everything, you just eat like a mountain, and it tastes super good, and then you just fuck every hole while eating every fucking object in the world, and then you grow and like you are the whole planet, and then you just wander through space just fucking things and eating it, and the whole planet's like, oh, win, oh, win, oh, win. Okay, wait, wait, okay. I'm trying to get present. <laughs> okay, you ever think of that? No. <laughs> so it's just me. It's just me. Okay, now, so that's, an, now, now by the way, looking at the, the full fruition of egoic desires like sex or making money actually can bring us into presence. You guys see that? It's another tool. You ever see the video I made where I talk about like imagine you're just surfing down a ski hill just fucking different girls while eating food and you go into space, like things like that. It's fun to think about because it shows the, the absurdity of that and outcome. So it's funny to kind of think about that. Like, you know, you fuck the whole world. Now, understand that part of life is death. So, and understand that you will forget things. Like, even, let, let's say that we get rid of money, let's say that we even get rid of sex or whatever it is, and we just say, you know what, I don't care about money, all that, I care about experiences. I think that sounds kind of cool, right? You care about experiences? I do like that, but here's what I found. What I found was even in experience, what happened to me was I forget my experiences. Some of the girls that I had sex with that, that was the best sex of my life, later after breakups, I get the chance to fuck them again, which is the best thing ever. You guys ever get a chance to do that? Yeah. Best thing ever, you get to fuck your ex? Yeah. Dude, how cool is that? It's like, it's, like, it's like going back to your old house like when you're a kid or you, know, you go back to your old school. <laughs> you're like, I'm fucking my ex. You're like, it's like it never, nothing ever changed, right? And what I found was the sex was never quite what I remembered. It's like, oh no, it was actually like this. Huh. A lot of time it wasn't as good as I remembered. Things that, you know, like I, I thought it was so good. I still think it is good, but it's not like good like what I thought. I go to older restaurants that I thought were so tasty. Julian used to do this all the time. He'd be like, there's this one restaurant at Olympia, this hamburger restaurant, it's so good. And he finally got to go back when he went to Seattle and he's like, it wasn't that good. <laughs> Your subjective experience of things, it's so subjective. Your memory is so subjective. So we even lose our memories. The things that we get, the experience we have, we lose those. But one thing that can go forward is the good energy that we bring in the world, at least to some extent. There's counter arguments against that too, but let's just, let's consider that even the galaxy will end. So what's the point to anything? There is a, there's none. Now by the way, that's very cloudy. We're in the clouds now, guys. We're in the clouds. But does this realization change the fact that you're maybe behind on your rent, you just need the fucking thing paid? That you need to get laid tomorrow because you're horny and you've been whacking off to ujiz.com and really you just like to get some fucking pussy? Does it change the fact that you have other dreams or desires? Well, it does in some extent. Again, we go back to the practical implications of getting present. What happens to you when, you're, when your awareness is in the present? Are you able to accomplish your goals more easily? What's more important than even being able to accomplish your goals more easily? 
Here's the thing we talked about earlier. When you're being run in your head, you may not even be moving towards goals that you even care about. You said you're 42? Yeah. Have you ever had experiences where you chase and chase and chase and chase and chase, and in the end, you got the goal, and what did you realize? The, the, almost like the process of chasing is where it's worth it. At the end, it's just like, this is a little overrated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the counter argument to that? Car Maybe you should have had more gratitude. Yes. But here's the thing, and here's the irony. Yes, perhaps you should have had more gratitude, as should have I, as should have all of us, really, all the time, right? But consider the fact that you have to intentionally implement gratitude. And that being the case, why not implement it for what you have now? We seen this? Like, I love going to a bar or restaurant, owning nice clothes, having sex with all women, all that. But I still have to internalize gratitude and feel that anyway to enjoy it. So why not start that gratitude right now anyway? And now presence is in the foreground, the physical is in the background, and in a way of speaking, you actually become more present through moving forward anyway. You see that? Catch it? Yes. Yes. A couple questions and I want to get back at more exercises. Did I see some hands up? Question. Uh, actually, what I wanted to say is several things. About, Speak up. Yeah. I wanted to say several things about presence. Mm -hmm. Like there are even more benefits to it mm -hmm. that I've experienced and uh, I feel like people might benefit from that. Sure. Make it succinct, quick, and loud. All right. Um, you experience more than the five senses that you thought you had. You learn that there is more to the world experience. Uh, like you think you have the reality, but there is more to it. And it opens your mind even more. And really weird shit, surreal shit can happen. Mm -hmm. Like you can bounce off the ground as you meditate. Mm -hmm. Really crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Do you want to know the six sense that I've seen? What? Do you want to know the sixth sense that I've seen from becoming more present? Sure. Being attuned to energies. Mm -hmm. So you can energetically feel what's happening and you can recognize, for example, women who you're bringing into your life. How many of you guys have brought like a living demon into your fucking household? <laughs> How many of you guys have brought multiple living demons into your household? <laughs> you need to get laid more. <laughs> okay? So, you know, how many of you guys have got into Relation, like business entanglements or things like that where later you're like, wow, you didn't see it coming. Or gone down paths that fucked you up. Look, you may also have responsibility for that. You may be the one more at fault than you realize. So, you know, you're like, oh, she's a demon, but maybe you brought it out of her, whatever it is, right? There's always a counter argument. There's always a paradox. At the same time, that sensitivity to energy that you feel, okay? Now, what I've tried to do here, I've tried to show you about a different channel. Now, this, this what I've showed you here, is how I was able to do game on the level that I do it. This was how I am able to do public speaking on the level that I do it. And this is also why I have that kind of fanatical following because people get that energy from me sometimes if they're attuned to it and they get hooked on it because it feels good. Funny enough, when you're down lower and you see somebody just a little bit above you, what does it look like in your limited perception? Enlightened. It looks enlightened, right? But it's not, okay? And that may not even be real. And it's also important to understand that anybody peddling that, it, there's no way that you could know if that's real or not. It doesn't mean they're lying either. They may believe it. Okay? It's just, it's within our limited understanding. But what we can learn is about being present to the moment, grateful, in a good mood, and most importantly, in a centered space where we're moving towards goals that actually we resonate with rather than resonating with stupid goals and, spinning, and, and spending your life chasing fucking phantoms, I'd rather get you aligned to what you really want to do now and then get you on the right path now. Get your awareness so it's not diffused, but bang, right there. And getting you in a better mood so that you can enjoy the outcomes that you get. So this is where I'm trying to get you, okay? So we've looked at a number of different tools. So what was one of the first tools we looked at? These are very basic. This is like, Presence work 101 here. The breath. What was the second one? A constant sound. What was the third one? Looking at things. What was the fourth one? Talking about things that we're stressful about, okay? We also looked at another one, which is gratitude, and we examined that. Okay? Think about something you're grateful about right now. 
Thank you. Good. Another one that I mentioned earlier as well is not being, uh, not playing a character. So like being willing to joke, self-deprecate. Paradox is another thing that drives us into presence. Half-truths. I like to make jokes that are kind of half sarcastic or half true. Frame myself in funny ways. I love to make jokes about petty desires. Like I just want to get laid right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, right? <laughs> like one of, okay, like again, I don't say this a lot on videos because I just know, like, because the mainstream media loves to clickbait shit. Like, they love to, like, cut this out and make clickbait out of it. <clears throat> but one of my favorite jokes to do, and it's a joke, but sadly, it's just so re re many paradigms removed from the mainstream that they always clickbait it. It's one of the jokes I like to make with my friends is, like, fuck bitches, get money. I love that as a joke. Just try saying that. Fuck, fuck bitches, fuck get, get money. money. Right? With the knowledge that it's so stupid, <laughs> and yet that is so not. And it's so awesome. Do you know what I mean, right? Like it's so stupid and it's so cool. You see the paradox there? It's so stupid and so cool. And like women are so not bitches. They're like the most amazing creatures. And yet they so are. <laughs> you know, and yet they're so not, you know, right? Like men to women were like such beautiful creatures to them bringing masculine energy and sex and provisions and you know what men can bring and yet we're such like you know and they're like what a pig like you know and yet we are such pigs like disgusting pigs right but of course you know we can acknowledge the men one but the women one we can't no they're perfect right they're perfect creatures they're angels everybody's an angel right except men the part where we said that we're good is lie. We're, we're pigs. <laughs> okay, so I, rep I just want to apologize. That was a bad attempt at humor. <laughs> I'm a pig. I apologize for my penis. They all collectively apologize for their penises. Spedini apologizes for her hypothetical penis. That is, that, is her, that is the part of the penis that almost evolved but didn't. The best part of me is my nipples. I wish they'd grown more. And every woman is a princess. All by virtue of being a woman. All of them. And I apologize and thank you. <laughs> See, I learned, I learned, right? Amazing though, we can't even, we, we can't engage in, in that kind of dialogue or you know, anything like that, right, in the mainstream because I guess they feel that, it, that even a slight joke, a slight joke would be, you know, could drive somebody in, into hatred, right, and division and, and whatnot. And so we have, to, we have to have dialogue at the lowest level possible. No sarcasm, no jokes, no paradox. It has to all be very literal and basic and, and no complexity whatsoever. The world is just a very simple place. There's good and there's bad and they're good and we're bad, <laughs> right? And that's it. God damn it! You better learn and shut up. So you know, right? But I love, but I love complex dialogue and paradox and things like that because it helps the presence. So, but unfortunately, it's just a little bit. It's a few different paradigms removed. So hopefully, people understand that in future. Remember, like I said, you know, modern society is very new. Now, so we looked at a couple different. We, we've looked at a couple different tools here, and you can also see how when you you combine things like say meditation, gratitude, a big one too. Look up at me. A big one too is realizing, it's, a, it's an intellectual thing, it's realizing you are not the voice, you're not gonna die if the voice goes away, you're not gonna die, and that you can have self-trust that when, you're, when your awareness is here, you can take better actions and more targeted actions. So, you know, it's just like Kobe Bryant, he's gonna go try to win a basketball game, he's, he's present as fuck, okay, present AF. <laughs> okay, he's present as fuck. You know, and, and by the way, when he can't get present, that's harder. So for me, when I do public speaking, like I got into this from public speaking in game. So I found that when I got really present, I did these amazing talks. And when I wasn't present, I was always clasping. I found that when I wasn't present in the club, that again, I would have these horrible nights. And when I just like go and have fun, it was amazing. And so even in say, success of women, we have different tools to get present. One of them could be just going in very congruent and accepting whatever happens. Another could be seeing the upside of every interaction. Another could be fucking hammering it hard just talking to everybody and you take so much action it shuts down the thinking mind. And there's, there's different ways in to kind of zone into it, okay? We see that. A big one too, by the way, is that we have to, is that there's an inner voice that's there. There's an inner voice and we have to feel that inner voice. But again, it's a paradox, right? Because we talk about how we have to learn from mentors and people that know more than us, but there's also an inner voice. What I'm gonna show you next is how to channel that inner voice. You guys ever heard that idea of channeling? 
You want to learn how to do that? Yes. Okay, so to me the idea of channeling is pretty absurd, but I think that at least some of it is, is legit, and I'll show you the part that I think is legit. So I'm going to show you something super cool. So here's how I do my, here's how I do my public speaking, okay? This is super, 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 super cool. So I want you to recognize what, what energy is heavy and what energy is very light. And you're going to see it in yourself. So you have a lot of dark energy in you. Pain body fueled. Me, 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 me. Very manipulative and insincere. People, what, one of the things that always doesn't sit well with me is when people moralize and just say, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be manipulative. You shouldn't be selfish. When I speak to my kids and they're being too physical with each other or too whatever, I don't just say, that's bad. I sit my kid down and I say, Vincent or Dylan, usually it's Dylan. <laughs> I say, Dylan, what does it mean when you do this? What does it mean when you do that? What would happen if somebody did that to you? Do you feel good about that? Is that what you want to do? I get him thinking. I don't want to train him to be told something's bad because I said so. Because what happens if he's trained to think something's bad because I said so? I, I want to say something really demented and dark and weird. Okay, so you'll have to excuse me and suck the energy out of the room. I think that what happens is the Holocaust. Why? Because the government comes in and says, pull the fucking, pull the handle, man. Just do what you said, good little boy. You're trained to not think. That's disgusting, that disgusts me, that sickens me. Here's the 10 commandments, you know? That shit should be internalized. You should understand why something is bad or good. If somebody is not taught to understand why something is bad or good, they don't have the critical judgment to see that. But more importantly, and here's what really fucking sickens me. It sickens me when people who want to be moralistic say that it's bad to be really successful or to make a lot of money. That is manipulation and crabs in a bucket 101. What are the reasons why they're right to an extent? One of them is when you're trapped in the physical, you're chasing phantoms. We talked about it. They're not entirely wrong. But abundance on the inside. There is no reason that that cannot manifest in abundance on the outside. Why is it that we associate massive success with negativity? What kind of programming is that? I want every one of you in this room to be very, very successful financially, health-wise, women-wise, but most importantly, I want you to be happy. And I want happiness to be a platform from which to spring. So, I want you to take note of what comes out of you energetically when you're speaking from presence, when you're present, and what comes out of you when you're in a, a selfish or negative state. I also want you to take note of how long your energy sustains when you're operating from presence. I want you to note how you feel in your body, health-wise, I want you to note how happy you are. And most important to me is how expansive you are. I want you to notice how you expand in presence. So I'm gonna teach you something. First we're gonna go through the three things of getting present because we'll stay present. First one's the breath. In, one. In again. One more time. In 
And now we'll do the Om one again. Breathe in. again. the really small crevices in it, the, the, the changes in like the imprints of the skin. Look at the hairs on the back, arm, ceiling. Don't analyze any of it. Don't compare it to anything. Don't judge it. Do the OM thing one more time. Breathe in. do there's another thing. Sometimes scrambling the logical condition thinking a little bit can also help. Just do this right now. You're kind of just scrambling it out a little bit. Okay, I do that a lot in, in some of the exercises I do. It's kind of like scrambling it. It's funny too, I want you to notice where you feel happy. Girls do this to dance all the time, right? Guys, we try to do it, we kind of suck, but you know, <laughs> girl, right? Like, do you see how girls get out of condition thinking? They dance. Probably they just know they're exhibiting themselves, but anyway, I'm, I'm a bad guy to say that. Okay, now, so notice, just move around. Try to feel pleasure even as you're moving. Like, like you don't need a vagina enveloping around your cock to feel good. It doesn't hurt and it does help. But let's just kind of go with it here, okay? Just push the chair in a little bit there, boys. Okay. Okay, look back at your hands. The beauty of it too is just not giving a fuck. Like when you do this, it just you just don't give a fuck. Just do what feels good without giving a fuck. Look, I'm not saying go like, you know, do something that's win lose or or to do harm, but rather just like, but like aside from just some uptight person, it's like, oh, they can't do that. <laughs> Other than people like in that mode, basically just don't care. Hey, I don't care. I don't give a fuck. What? <laughs> they can't even get in. <laughs> okay, see that? Okay. You see the self-amusement there? The guy rapping at the front is having the most fun because he's amusing himself. We're not waiting for outside stimulus. Try me at the back, just go, he can't even get in. Try saying that. He can't even get in. That's not bad. You did well. <laughs> mm. Were you here yesterday with Jeff or no? I was here. Okay, that will help. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now, so again, do you see that, that self-simulation? That self simulate. That self simulate. Okay. <laughs> Next exercise, right? Spetty, you lead. Okay. So. Okay. So. Okay. So we see the. Okay. We see the. We see the idea there. Okay. Okay. Self amusement. When you actually stop giving your power away to sex or to commercial society or other people, and you just amuse yourself, when you stop giving your mood away to the need for control, safety, approval, self attack. Not knowing what's going to happen, attachment, ego gratification. When you stop giving that away, now you're in control, right? Why do I do weird shit like, look at your hands, breathe in, oh, man. all that, right? Well, people have done that, it's been tested. So to me, I just, I mean, people have tested a lot of things, had you know, happiness in a lot of ways, but the point being, it's something that I've seen to work for, in my experience. So <clears throat> that being the case, we're getting more present now. Breathe in. Let out the stress. Just blow it out as if it's just some energy. Don't even question it. Breathe in again. <clears throat> I 
And don't wait to get present. That's an attachment. I need to get present. It's an attachment. You can't even get in. It's an attachment. It's all attachment, right? So we let go of that, okay? So you're learning, you're learning here where the sweet spot is in your mind so that you can be like that Kobe Bryant, you know, when the shot's coming down. You ever heard that expression, ice in my veins? Kobe says that. It's like ice in his veins. Yeah. Basically, the present, presence is like a dimmer and under stress, the dimmer actually goes up. That's why things like even going to a hot sauna or a cold plunge, they feel uncomfortable, but you get kind of high off it because you're forced to get more present. You can't be distracted and attached in this like dream world of needing this and that and this because it's all taken away. It's crazy. There's this one thing I love to do called a plaza where they bash you with oak leaves in this super hot sauna. Psycho. Psycho. <laughs> Amazing, right? Because you're just like, you feel like your soul is going through the pits of hell. You're just like, mm. you're just being hit with this fucking leaf thing, right? Plus, I love s and I'm a, I'm a, just kidding. <laughs> so, actually not at all, but I would like to learn more how to be because it seems interesting. So, yeah, that's how much I've been in the community, like PUA community. I'm like, I'm like so, so much in dominance. Like, I've done that so much. I'm like, what would it be like to be a sub? Like, put like a ball in my mouth, <laughs> like that. Probably will never do it, but it could be interesting. See, like, like being the leader, that, when you've been in the community a long time, that comes natural, right? Yeah. But the, the, the power of following, that's interesting to me. I, did, I, did, I don't know. I'm just, I, don't, I know so what little else? about it. I know so little about it. What's that? We gotta, you got to ask what else. What else? Yeah. Yeah. So next exercise. Put the ball in my mouth and beat me now. Scratch me. Whip me. Pull my hair. Put it in my... Okay. So, okay. So now... Get present. You gotta be present when you're being penetrated. Penetration equals presence. Mm -hmm. So again, the jokes, sarcastic jokes, okay? Present building, you see that? Okay? Are we allowed to make a joke, guys? Is it okay? It's a pretty serious world, right? We're fucking evolved monkeys on a rock. It's pretty fucking serious, man. Don't joke ever. Stay in your character, man. Stay in your character. You're locked in your character. Again, do this. Get out of your character, right? Get out of your fucking character. This room is getting, it's getting more cultish by the minute, guys. Okay, look what he's making them do. Oh, no. Oh, it's, it's the guy associated with Julian Blanc. Oh, look, he's even worse. Okay, so, all right. They moved, right? We made them eat processed food. We gave them all this negative news and garbage. We put them in a fucking industrial education system. But he made them move. Oh, no. And Julian, no. Okay? It's wrong. <laughs> Don't do anything different. Just conform. Conform. Conforming is the best. That's what makes sense. Just a nice old pair of blue jeans, <laughs> nice jacket, and a gentleman. <laughs> Breathe. <sighs> you don't need approval from anybody. You have the resources. You're gonna be safe because you're present and in presence you'll feel things coming at you. You're more likely to be safe. You don't need to control everything. Don't attack yourself. You don't need to compare yourself. You don't need to judge. You're aware of things. You can discern. You can feel the energy of things. Breathe deep. So as we're moving, what, what I'll find will happen to me is I'll start getting, I think it's some kind of serotonin buildup in my head, I don't know what it is, but it's like my brain starts to buzz. Does anybody feel a bit like that now? I've been doing this for years, so. Do you guys feel a bit of a brain buzz? What does it feel like? How would you describe it? Last night, my brain buzz was going so crazy, I was literally, I was starting to get scared that like, I, like someone slipped me a molly or something. It was super crazy. It was crazy. 
I literally was like, fucking one of these bitches on Molly and fucking <laughs> made out with me. And I was like, fucking damn it. I actually thought that because as I, because what I found is present energy, your, your body gets more acclimated to housing it. A, a big part of it too is an increase in self-trust because as you're first starting, you're gonna find that you're, you're like, I can't do this, I can't do this because you're afraid that if you stop thinking, you're gonna fuck up and everything's gonna get bad and you're not gonna be motivated and all these things that drove you are not gonna be there. So it really fucks you up. But then later as you get more present, like how much did we crush it last night at the club? Like the whole club fucking was just having fun with us. We're, we're charging around on the fucking plastic cow. We're dancing. It was, cr- every girl there just like, ah, ah. You know, I think there was like one negative girl, right? I went to give her a hug, she's like, excuse me! I don't want a hug! And I was like, okay. And then I just moved on, right? No need to debate it. No need to debate it. I'm getting on the cow, bitch. No need to debate it. So. Okay? I wouldn't even say bitch. I just give him a fucking cow, okay? So, I'm just aware she's a bitch in presence. So, she's in the energy, right? She's in the energy, okay? So now as we're, so, you know, and, and that's why I love all people, by the way, because even the bitchiest fucking person, it's just that they're unaware of the energy in them. Think of, like, this is why I love everybody, okay? This is how, like, when you say, I love everybody. If somebody tells you they love everybody, don't just believe the fucking hype, man, okay? Because that's, because there's a word for I love everybody. What is it? Pompous, pompous as fuck. Pompous AF. I just love everybody. Do you not? Oh, oh. You don't love everybody. Someday you can be as loving as me. Ah. Uh, okay, it's pompous as fuck. But at the same time, so that's again the paradox, right? We see the paradox. But. Where do we have it to where actually you can love everybody? Here's the thing, look, at the end of the day, I don't think you want to harm anybody, right? You get mad, you kind of do. You're like, I want to punch them. His fucking face is so punchable right now. But at the end of the day, you don't really, okay? And, I don't know, maybe you do. You're like, well, anyway, just keep going. <laughs> so, right, but, but you don't want to harm anybody. But sometimes people, they're so possessed in negative energy, but stop and think of that person. Think of the potential that person has. As, as fucked up as things can be, they could turn around and think of all the years of evolution. Think of that person's parents. That person's parents wishes the best for them. Their friends, think of their desires for themselves, right? That like, again, when we look at, again, as you're aware of that, look at your hands. Just look at every little fucking mark in that. Like, every little hair, every like thing on your nails, your actual nails, like your, like the floor. Like think that, that, that this even exists. Stop and consider that this even exists. Like, what the fuck, right? That this even exists. Would you want to take a life or, or, or hurt somebody? It's just that the energy that's in them, they don't know it's there. They're not aware that it's there. And so because they don't know, they're being run by that, but actually they have a chance, right? The problem with, by the way, even, even like with say death, is that that person never has a chance to redeem themselves, right? Maybe in another life that that exists, but there's not that chance of redemption. So to me, everybody like, I've done fucked up things, we all have, right? So everybody deserves a chance to turn that franchise around. <laughs> you know, like to switch that shit around. So to me, that's what I believe in. So I never want, I don't want to do harm, but some, like, you ever get so mad you just want to piss somebody off? I do, I'll, I'll admit it. Yeah. Sometimes I just want to clown them and just shut them down. <laughs> I don't want to tell you. You know, it's kind of gratifying. But, and you know, it's a little bit of petty fun, but I think that as I get more present, I'm like, wait a minute, I don't. Like, it's okay. So that's, so when you say that you love everybody and that you have gratitude for everything, and you have gratitude for the mystery of life, it just depends on the perspective that you're coming from. It's not that I don't ever lower into perspective where I just want to fucking like punk some guy, like a white knight as an example. It's pretty satisfying. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> it's really satisfying. Um, but you know, or some girl that's just rude to you and you just have like this comment back and everyone's like, ha oh, ha ha, it's pretty awesome. I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. I'd, I'd love to say it wasn't, it is. But maybe, but there's a space from which it's just whatever, right? Maybe the girl's being bitchy and you just go, You can't even get in. And then you just and then you just walk off and start making out with some girl beside her. And then you're just like Right? Or or and, and I do that regularly. But in addition to that, but let's just say you didn't. Let's just say that you know you can't even get in. And they're like, yes I can. And then you walk to make out the girl, and she's like, go away. And then you just walk home with your tail between your nose. Well, maybe there's something there. Maybe that's an equally powerful experience. So, okay. Now, I want to show you guys that channeling thing, okay? So notice the space that we're in now. Take another deep breath. Good, very good. So what, you're, what I want you to get attuned to is 
what comes out when you're sharing and how you feel expansive and then when you contract. You're gonna notice this. And so, as a public speaker, funny enough, one of the things that helped me get rid of, say, I'm, this is sort of a, a strange example, but the ums and the ahs, a lot of it for me was that the ums and the ahs were coming from my awareness being too pulled out. Now, to be fair, I, I almost don't like saying that, because certainly I have speeches with ums and ahs and all that shit, but you know as a public speaker, they'll tell you, like, get rid of the ums and ahs. So sometimes I've seen certain speakers where to get rid of it, they slow down to the point they have no, they've diminished their charisma. So they're, they're, like, they're like, you know, just take your time. They'll listen and they're like, hello. Pause this, right? Yes. My name is Owen. I'm not gonna rush because you should listen. And I'm just like, dude, this shit sucks. <laughs> Change the channel. Shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. So, so that's the removing the ums and ahs from the wrong space in my mind. Where the ums and ahs diminished for me was when I stopped trying to force it, but when I just got present and got attuned to what comes out, and I just let it flow out. So you guys know, as I gave this talk here, I don't know if you're aware of this, but the first part of the talk was about entrepreneurial and getting laid, which then energizes you at certain low vibration levels, but activates you out of apathy. Then I switched my jacket from the skull to the orange jacket, and then now I've moved, and the purple scarf, yes, for the gay Teletubby. And I began moving you up more into a, into a different range, okay? So I didn't just take you from a state of, say, apathy and go bang like that. I'm moving you slowly, okay? I learned this from the book Power Versus Force or Levels of Energy by Fred Dodson, which talks about how the lowest vibration is, say, apathy or shame. And then maybe you move into, like, you know, anger, or maybe you move into willingness. And those are actually higher entrepreneurial energies, and then we can move higher into presence and whatnot, okay? So it's just an interesting theory they have, true or not true, I don't know, just because you read in a book doesn't make it true, but it did correlate a lot to my experience, could change my mind later and say it's a bunch of bunk, but for now it, it resonates currently. It's pretty cool, you can, you can get some cool outcomes with this. So I want to attune you right now to a couple things. So I want you to be aware of channels that you wouldn't see. Take another deep breath. Now, look, I'm all about getting money and winning and killing it and crushing it and grind. I love that stuff. But there's two different paradigms that can come from. So one of them is, it's for you. Now, when you think of that, so say you have a light buzz in your head right now. A very quick way, in my experience, to shut that buzz off is when you become self-conscious. So remember earlier I, said, I talked about the ums and ahs? Your brain is struggling to come up with what to say because your resources are being depleted, your power is being diminished because you're up there micromanaging people's perception of you. So say in success with women, when you're going out to the club, you're getting a lot of approaching anxiety. That's a very selfish thing to experience. There's other explanations for that, by the way. Many, many paradigms we could look at, but one of many but it's a good one, I think, is that this idea that you are <clears throat> worried about what you look like rather than just making her have a fun time. Now, this is complicated because on a certain degree, apathy and enlightenment look exactly the same. Supplication and offering value look almost the same. Apathy, uh, yeah, I'm enlightened. It looks like enlightenment to a degree, doesn't it? Many people who teach spiritual growth, if you look into their pupil, you'll see the light is diminished to an extent, but they're telling you to just stop being attached. In my experience, but I could be wrong, but my personal interpretation of that, personally, very subjective, I don't, I don't understand all this stuff, to be honest, at all. But my interpretation so far at 37 is, maybe they're using apathy to feign enlightenment. And, somebody's teaching that for what they can get out of it. It's important to get, to get things, right? Because when you offer value, who's an important person to offer value to? Yourself. Yeah. Yourself. Many people that are so giving are depleted. Many of the most amazing people I know, people who run charities, don't know how to do a marketing campaign to make their charity work. It sucks. Because they're give, 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 they don't receive. <clears throat> That's not loving yourself. When you actually take that time to say, go to a sauna, eat healthy, have sex with a girl, have a nice night with a girl, go eat a nice meal, 
Live in a nice place, whatever you can, right, at that time. That's loving yourself, which allows you to offer more. But that's different from fueling a self-image that puts you in this frenetic fucking state. So I want you to notice, just as you're speaking, how you can speak more clearly when you're sharing with the group. Fearlessly, to an extent. More, at least with less fear. You're sharing. How your voice expands. How your energy expands. How more comes to you. And if you just go into that feeling and you trust it, amazing things come out. This is similar, by the way, to how a woman orgasms. Anybody here ever teach a woman how to, how to come really hard? Anyone ever done that? One of the ways that you teach her <clears throat> to come, a lot of girls really are very sexually repressed. It's super crazy, right? It's super crazy. And your job, <laughs> your mission, which I'm about to reveal to you, the paper's gonna burn up, is to make as many women come. Okay. <laughs> we're pigs. So. But we're just pigs. <laughs> okay. So. The way you get a girl to come is, you, is girls, are, they, they're often stuck in their head. They're thinking too much how they look, how they're being perceived. Thinking, thinking, thinking. If you train the girl, go into the feeling. Go into the feeling. Then say that you're, you know, fingering her, hitting the G-spot, hitting on her clit. So go into the feeling. Go into the feeling. And then you might even say something like, like you don't have to be in control. 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 You're not in control, baby, baby. You're not in control, baby. You're not in control. It's okay, go into the feeling, baby. And then here's the other key too. You want her to feel no rush to come at all, but you also want her to come. It's actually getting her to come is a Zen paradox. <laughs> so, because, you're, because you're, here's the thing, right? You want to tell her, I'll say to a girl, I will do this as long as it takes. You have forever. Ironically, my hand is like fucking killing me. <laughs> right? I'm, getting, I'm getting carpal tunnel. <laughs> I'm like, I'm in my mind, I'm like, bitch, hurry up. Please. But I know that if I don't want to get carpal tunnel, that the Zen paradox is that if I tell her she has all the time she needs, that she's likely to come. So the Zen paradox, if you want to avoid carpal tunnel, you have to embrace carpal tunnel. <laughs> get rid of your attachment to not having carpal tunnel. So, I, I, so I'm, like, I'm like, baby, I'm like, I'm like, you have as long as you need. Just go in the, you have as long as you need. It feels good for me to do this. It feels like, it, meanwhile, I'm like, fuck. Right now, I'm like, it feels good for me to do this, right? Hopefully, no girl I date ever watches this and can't come. So, you know, so, right, I'll go down these long. Because the thing is, as soon as she, if she feels like you're getting tired, then she feels pressure to come. And then she goes into her head and she can't come. You see that? Yeah. So you need her to get out of her head and go into the pleasure of coming. And then she feels waves of it. And then ideally what you even do is you actually use fractionation where you take it away for a minute, let her rest. That's called the yin and the yang. You let her rest for it. You guys are like, this is what the seminar got interesting. <laughs> so, okay, so, you know, so you let her rest for a minute. You're getting energetically attuned. You let her rest and then you let her heart rate slow down a bit and then you go in for round two. Let her heart rate slow down a bit. You go in for round three. And when you see that it's building, when you see this building, now you can say, come, let it go. And here's the key, let it go. Let it go, baby, let it go. Let it go. Baby, come, come, let it go. But you don't do that too early because if you do it too early, then she feels pressure to come and the energy, she's not present enough to the feeling and then she won't do it. That's how you get a girl to pop, that's how you get her addicted and that's how you get her barefoot and pregnant in the okay. So, <laughs> get her to love you, you can do anything you're bit. Okay. So, but it really does help, right? And they can often have a release, they can cry, they call that a teargasm, and they just love you to death. If you have a girlfriend that's super bitchy, she's super cunny, and then you do this for her, it's amazing how many of these like legitimate concerns that she had, like you wouldn't put the trash out, you would do, all of a sudden she's gone, she's like, oh, ah! like that, she's like, I'll get the trash, I just love you. <laughs> it's amazing, right? Just like when you get present, a lot of things that concern you don't concern you anymore, okay? So this is, I'm teaching you your guy's version of coming right now, okay? I'm gonna make you all squirt. <laughs> That's still gonna be the final exercise of enlightenment. <laughs> okay? If you hit the front wall, you're enlightened. Okay? So, so we have to get, so we have to get the, so we have to get into the feeling of presence, right? We wanna get into the, see what I'm trying to do here, by the way, is bridge the gap between, the, between how dense and opaque a lot of this Eastern philosophy stuff is. I'm trying to get in practical terms people could, could go with, because when you just get some guy in a fucking turban, like, like this, like you naughty boy, you should just be like, like it's like, no, fuck off. It's okay to say fuck off to somebody who says that shit to you. You should. Some guy, some guy just sitting there like, 
like that, it's like you should be like this, your gut reaction should be fuck off. Say that with me, fuck oh. off. It actually should be. It's just like people who tell you you should drive a Prius that doesn't look cool yeah, to off. save gas. No, it doesn't look cool. It doesn't look cool, fuck off. I want a fucking electric car that looks cool. Why should you not have, why should you be forced to drive some stupid looking fucking car that people now think is an Uber and are gonna jump in? They're gonna jump in the back of your fucking car. <laughs> Look who here drives a Prius. Okay, you do, Arthur, congrats. Has anybody dr jumped in the back of your car yet? <laughs> okay, so maybe, hey, that's not that bad. Okay, I like your Prius, by the way, I take it back. Now, Basically, but like to me, don't give me this like fucking rinky dink fucking vehicle that doesn't look cool. Like, yo, don't give me the shit where, I, where you're saying like you should be present, like of attachment, and not, you know, fucking crush it. Fuck off. Anybody that tells you that, I just. Now, the counter argument to that is that's not really getting present, blah, 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 all the shit. Well, I guess that's where we're at then, okay? So, fuck off. So, okay, so I don't, okay? It's like people tell you, you should eat healthy food that doesn't taste good. Fuck off. Healthy food can taste good. Being a good person, you can win. People who tell you, oh, you shouldn't get laid because you're a player, fuck off. There's ways to meet women that offers massive value that they're gonna enjoy. So if somebody tells you that you shouldn't go get laid and have a good sex life, fuck off. Okay, you're put here to be alive and to experience the world and to be happier and to have more gratitude and to raise your vibration and to be more present, all of it. So fuck off if somebody's saying that. That's my view, but I'm only 37 and I could be wrong. And maybe when I'm 50, I'll be like, you know what, no, I was just really caught up in this shit and I was wrong. That's my current perspective. Maybe you resonate with, maybe you don't. Perspectives evolve. Thank you. <laughs> so, I just think that we wanna move through the paradigms, right? We move through the paradigms. Now, what I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to just maybe a little further ahead on the road in certain areas, just a couple of them, and I'm trying to show you a little bit what's up the road. Let's just kick the can up the road a little bit here. So, what we're seeing is when you're sharing and to be expansive, your power increases. You have more resources at your disposal. So people will see me crush it and say game, they say, how are you doing this? People will see me say doing a video or a speech, how are you doing this? I'm showing you how I'm doing it. So when I'm in that mode, where like a girl who's going into her orgasm, I'm going into presence. So as I'm speaking, I speak words that make me feel more present. I'm going into the feeling of it. So that means that that present energy is speaking through me, but let's not make it this pompous shit. The presence is speaking through me. How much more pompous could you get than a statement like that? Oh, I don't take credit. It's the presence. How much more fucking pompous could you get than that? Basically, you're making it sound like you're channeling a fucking spirit, but you don't take credit. Shut the fuck up. And yet, it is kind of true in a way of speaking. Okay? So we want to go, look, let's just break it down in practical layman's terms. Get in a good mood. Get in the zone. Stop thinking. Maybe that's a bit pompous, okay? Because you're like, I can't. But you see the idea? Again, take a deep breath. Again, awareness on the breath. Let the thingy dissolve. Now, if what you crave is the dopamine kick, the unconsciousness, the physical feeling, then your power gets limited, at least the way I experience it, the way I've taught it. Maybe there's other ways of looking at it, but that's how I see it. So that being the case, what we do now is we go into what feels good. Now, what are some common things that feel good? One of them, like I said, is that buzz of being present, that feeling. So there's a couple of different things that we can recognize that help us with that. The first one is contributing. As long as what I'm saying, I feel like it's helping you, I feel good, I go more into presence. But if I feel like, because look, I, I, rant, I rant a lot, right? So sometimes I'm like, like, am I like just some rant here, just wanna hear myself talk? I question myself on that a lot. It is probably true. Mm -hmm. So I ask myself that. I ask myself, am I trying to shove my opinions down your fucking throat? Am I trying to look cool to you? Am I trying to make you think RSD is cool? I mean, I kinda am, I guess, right? You know what I mean? Like, I kinda am. I care. I care that you think the shit's cool. I want you to like it. I want you to think I'm cool. You know what I mean? So, you know, so there, it's never like gonna go away, so to speak, but it's that paradox. It's the paradox, right? It's that, that physical part, it's still there, but it's in the background 
and the presence is in the foreground. So it's okay to want to look cool and all that to get approval, control, expansions of your abilities, great results, but I'm trying to push that, I'm trying to allow that to be in the background. By the way, the key is trusting that this is actually leading me there anyway. It's, a, it's, again, Zen paradox. There's a trust that that's leading me there anyway. That in letting it go, it comes. You want to talk about a great example of that? What's the number one example you've ever, ever, ever seen? Pimpin'. In game. You ever just go out to a restaurant, you start hooting and hollering? I do. <laughs> 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 Laughing, clowning, dancing around, clowning with your boys. Not giving a fuck. And every guy in there is looking at you saying how cool that guy is. Except the one poopy pants who's like, look at him. <laughs> then, then the girls are looking, right? And the girls come sit, you brush them off, you're joking with your boys, you engage them a bit. And there's this, and then the, here's the best fucking part. This is why I got in this. You guys want to know how I got in this? It's pure pimping, you know that, right? I didn't get in this shit like, Ugh. I got in this from game. That's why I got into this shit. From game. So, on random nights, I would just fall into this at random. And what would happen is, the other guy, when, you're, when you lock into that state, maybe it's one night a year in your first year or two, hopefully more, but you know, the cloud's the only part every so often when you're new. So, at least for me, you, you could have a totally different experience. So, I'm sitting there, and I'm just noticing other guys come up, and they look so weird. They look so fucking lame. It's so wrong. And you just kind of look at the girl, like the dude's trying, and you kind of just look at the girl, and you're, you're, you're kind of just like. <laughs> <laughs> and you go, and then you're like, that's cool. <laughs> and he's destroyed. <laughs> he is annihilated. He just like, like in, in, a, in a glance. You know, that, you know that power versus force, David R. Hawkins, right? It's like you can force it, right? Like the, bring out the tool in the man arsenal and win uh, all the shit, or you're just like. <laughs> like a pound, right? Like the condescending pound. You know, you're just like. And then he's like, like that, and then you look at the girl and you're like. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe do it again, right? I love that in game. I love that in game. I love games so much. I love games so much. I love games so much for that shit. I love those nuances. I can't do it all the time, right? I fall in out of it myself. But the more, the more here's a minute, the more, the more it happens. It's really fun. So, you know, and, and by the way, people would say, well, is that Tulliam? I feel like he's learning a lesson. Because that would happen to me. And I would learn a lesson. I'd be like, yeah, I'm all in my head. I'm all needy. I'm all desperate. I'm all fucking weird and creepy. And now he doesn't care and he'll go on with her. In many ways, it's like women are like this microcosm of the universe. When you express intent and get aligned to it, they do like what the universe would do. I love that about game. Women, it's like the ultimate self-fulfilling prophecy. When you know what you want but you let it go, it, it's like it manifests an uh, uh, you know, it's just like, it's crazy, right? It's the best. So that's what I love about that. So again, we know what we want to do we know what we want to share, but we focus on expansion and contribution. So remember I said earlier, don't let anyone shame you into feeling bad, like you're bad. Like you should just do good things. Do you want to know why people don't do good things sometimes? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but one of them is they're not, they're not taught why they selfishly benefit when you do good things. If you're not taught why it's in your best interest to contribute, like that you're going to feel better when you do, well then why the fuck would you listen? And, and anybody says, just because it's the right thing, fuck off. I don't, I don't go with the world view that doing the right thing is a win-lose. I go with the world view that doing the right thing is a win-win. If something isn't awesome, fuck it. Fuck that. Going out and meeting a ton of women, most of those girls should have had an awesome night because you're there. You go make a lot of money, society should be better that you did that. It's a win-win. That's a limited paradigm. There are counterexamples to it. We could debate it all day. But there's a general degree to which that's true. So again, when we contribute, what do we get? 
What do we get? We get more presence, which then locks us in more, which then makes us more effective, which then gives us more energy. I have more energy now than I did at the start of the event. And I've been teaching all weekend, by the way. So we get more energy, more awareness, more focus. We get more aligned with ourselves. We get that happy serotonin buzz in the head. We feel good. We're getting attuned to who we are. We're acting in authenticity. And we're raising. We're going up. Take a deep breath. Okay, so what I want to attune you to here is a very powerful ability to communicate. Very powerful. Something that will allow you to communicate in ways you never imagined. And here's what it is. Okay, you want to make major impact. What I've experienced myself is we get attuned to what makes the communication powerful, we get attuned to what diminishes it. So we said contribution, right? Now what we do is we go into our bodies and we feel what kind of words feel good and what kind of words take us away from presence. What moves us towards presence, what takes away. So say I say that like 80% of this seminar I was present. 90% of the seminar I was present. 70% of the seminar is present. 80% of the seminar is present. Which one sounded the most real? I kind of led you to it because I said it twice, but you see the idea. So one of the things I love to do is I like to actually test because truth and authenticity has a present ting to it. So try right now, take a guess within a 30% range. I'm not really sure I was truly 80% or not, but I might have been. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe in the last little bit, I don't know. But take a guess how present you were throughout this seminar and try 10% above, 10-20% above, 10-20% below, and at the mark. You may notice that actually it was lower than you thought. Like you'll be like, you'll be like 80% and you, you thought it was 80 and then you're like 60% and you're like, oh, it was 60. You'll actually hear yourself saying it. So try that now. What percent? Try, say that it was 20%, try 30, try 10, try 20 and see what makes you feel present as you say it. Just try it. Thought experiment. Weird little experiment. Just try it now. 40%. Okay, pause. Okay, were you able to feel how when you said the one that was true, it actually kind of increases the buzz? I know I'm getting really weird and outlandish here. Just thought experiment. Let's try it. Could you feel it? Okay, so now say... Um, I want to say I want to hurt people, I want to help people, or I'm indifferent to people. Or say I want to hurt life, I want to help life, I'm indifferent to life. Try those and see which one comes out better. More present. Okay. Yeah, so maybe a couple of you guys felt really good at the hurt one. <laughs> You're a psycho. Congratulations. <laughs> so, okay, but do, did you guys see that? Can you feel that? Yeah. I want to be joyful. Then say, I want to be so-so. Say, I want to be miserable. Try those. <laughs> say, I want to wait until I've accomplished all my goals to be happy. Say, I want to be happy in this moment and accomplish my goals. Try those. By the way, do you want to know what I just discovered there? I still house a lot of that shit of I've got to wait until I accomplish my goals. I do myself. That's actually why I teach. I noticed, I was like, I want to wait until I get my goals to be happy. I want to be happy now and wait. Yeah, I can actually feel that I'm still a little bit under that delusion that I've got to wait. Even at 37, right? Accomplish this and that and the other thing. But that's still a me bit. That's a hard one to get out, is it not, as a man? I think it is. But what I've noticed is that as I shift, things get better. So just try to notice that. Now, the idea of speaking with power is that you get into that mode where you get a momentum with just sharing and with what's true to you. And as you get into momentum with it, what you'll find is more of it just comes out. Now, let's say that you're out at a club talking to a bunch of people. 
you'll do that move that's just kind of funny. You'll pull in at the right time. You'll kiss at the right time. You'll pull away at the right time. You'll say the right thing. But you have to trust it because part of it is that as you start doing it, what happens? You think about it. I, oh, oh, I'm the pimp. Yeah. Oh, I'm the pimp. Oh, I'm the pimp. Who's the pimp? It's me. I'm the pimp. He can't even get in. I'm the pimp. You see that? So, right? Now, so what you have is you have something to where you, you, you lock in, but then you come out. So Kobe Bryant, he scored 81 points, and he said the key was, as he's going about his, his experience, it's just every step, every shot, every move. 81 points, the second highest scoring tally in the NBA history. Highest was Wilt Chamberlain. Want to talk about a guy that can get laid, go check him out. <laughs> so, so what you had is Kobe, he, he didn't even like go like, yeah, so much after his shots. He just went about it. He, as soon as he's like, I'm in the zone, what happens? Falls out of the zone. So the more that you identify as the witnessing consciousness, as opposed to the thoughts, the more that you stay in the zone. Most of our society is pulling us back. So we can come in here at our little group and get very present, but most of society is going to pull us back into that gravitation between the shows, music, not all of it, at all, but a lot of it, the food, the people around us, influences, the general density of the energy on earth. There's places on earth where the energy is so dense, people are just straight killing each other all day. Is it real to you that Aleppo exists? Is that even real to you sitting here in LA? Is that even conceivable to you? Look how low we can go, right, as a species? What a low vibration we can get into? But the question is, what's the other side of that pendulum, right? How happy could we get? How joyful could we get? How expansive could we get? But on a certain level, we need to shift our training. We need to retrain ourselves, not for control muscles so much, but release muscles. Take a deep breath. Again. Think of anything that makes you feel unsafe, out of control, not approval, place you're attacking yourself, place you don't know the answer right now, things you're attached to, an image you want. Breathe it in, the tense energy around that. Breathe it in. Let it out. Don't even question why it's out. It's just out. That energy is just out. <coughs> Breathe in that tense energy again. Breathe it in. Let it out. Think of any of that shit in your head and just say, get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Don't logically think of why. Don't be like, this is why, that's why, blah, blah, blah. Just, that energy's out. No reason, by the way. Just say, get out. Get, get out. out. Get out. Get out. Say, get present. Get, get present. present. Say, wake up. Wake, wake up. up. Deep breath. We want to build a center here, a center point from which action emerges rather than a reactive core with which things are hitting you and you're responding in reaction. Want we'll get out of proactivity, or sorry, we'll get out of reactivity <laughs> and into proactivity. <coughs> Breathe in. Just 
Just make the sound mm, like this. Mm. Look at your hands. Now I'm going to get you to say, I can't get present. I'm stuck in my head. I can't stop thinking. I'm angry and I just want everything to fuck everyone and I can't get present. Just mumble anything like that right now. Just do it right now. I can't get present. I'm stuck in my head. I just want my shit. Fuck this. Fuck everybody. I just, I can't. I'm stuck. I can't do it. And this shit's dumb. It's dumb. And I'm a balding ginger too. I'm a balding ginger. I'm dumb. So stupid. I hate my life. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. The world is bad and hurtful. Say I've been mocked. Say I've been mocked. I've been mocked. I've been mocked. Say I've been mocked. I'm a, I'm a victim. I hate my life. I wish I was never born. Fuck everything. It all sucks. It's not worth it. Fuck everything. I just want to watch Netflix and not even chill. Yeah, fuck, fuck even Netflix. I don't want to even click the button. Fuck it all. I have no control. I need control. I hate that I don't have control. I, this balding ginger shuts is an idiot. This balding ginger is an idiot. Fuck everything. I just keep thinking. Why are you trying to make me not think? Fuck you. Why would I want to not think? Fuck yeah, thinking's awesome. Thinking's awesome. Thinking's super awesome. <laughs> Make a sound of frustration and all the bullshit in your life. Just think of all the bullshit you can't control. <sighs> Fuck this. traffic. <laughs> Who do you think you are? You lied about me. The things that you said weren't true. I'm going to set you straight. I'm going to set the record straight. I'm going to beat you. Derp. 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 I'm dumb. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. This is dumb. Stupid. Slow down. Go. sign because Tyler's in the Illuminati. Illuminati confirms. Yeah, yeah. You're not in the Illuminati. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're bad. You're wrong. Wrong. Derp. Again, derp. Again. That's pretty good. Deep breath. <laughs> deep breath in, deep breath in. Say happy. 
Health. Health. Wealth. wealth. By the way, when you hear wealth from that, when you say that word wealth, does that sound low vibration to you? No. 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 Wealth. 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 It's important for you to take care of yourself. It's important for you to be happy. It's okay to receive. It's okay to crush it. It's okay if that hot girl wants to have sex with me, and when you say me, I mean you, but not me, but say me. <laughs> if you're a woman, it's okay for that amazing man to cover me with jewels. <laughs> Just imagine, hey, you're half woman, you have nipples. Just say it. It's okay for that amazing man to bathe me in jewels and, 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 to show it the jewels to other women, collect their tears in a cup, and make Kool-Aid out of the tears for my kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what all women want, of course, right? So, okay, so, okay, happy. Happy. Joyful. Joyful. Sharing. Sharing. Moving up. Moving out. Abundance. Abundance. Freedom. 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 Unlimited. Unlimited. Any possibility. Any possibility. Sharing. Sharing. Love. Love. Peace. 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 Joy. Joy. Presence. Presence. <laughs> Stillness. Stillness. Gratitude. Gratitude. Appreciation. Appreciation. It's all good. It's all good. I have the resources. I have the resources. I can handle this. I can handle this. I got this. I got this. It's not so serious. It's not so serious. It's all a big joke. Still take it seriously. Produce outcomes. Let outcomes move through you. It's all good. It's all good. Share. 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 Moving up. Moving up. Creative. Creative. Fluid. Fluid. Expansive. Expansive. A better world. A better world. Think of that great energy. How do you guys feel right now? Ask for that energy to help you. Help me. To help you do good. Help me to do good things. I want to do something good with this. The power that you give me, I'll use to share. I'll share this. I'm ready. I'm fired up. Look at your hands again. <laughs> Feel your teeth with your tongue. Feel yourself swallow. Yeah, swallow. <laughs> oh. Stretch your mouth out. Do that. Stretch it. Put your fingers like, kind of like in your ears a bit, like that. Deep breath. Any remaining stress, breathe in the stress deep. We're going to release it. Breathe it in. Just let it out. Let it out. Don't rationalize it. Just let it out. Yeah, I heard like an awe there. It's kind of gay sounding, but <laughs> gay, is, gay is trendy where in Cali. So let's, let's, let's all do the awe, like as really, like breathe in, just go awe, like as you do it. Breathe in. <laughs> this is where we need the jerk off kid at the front to lead the jerk. Okay. Okay. Kevin, what up, bro? Okay. Breathe it in. <laughs> Who needs a girl, right? Come on. 
Okay. <laughs> breathe it in, breathe it in. Uh. <laughs> now say, say how angry you are. I'm so angry. I'm so angry. I'm so pissed. I'm so angry. I'm so, I'm so pissed. I hate my life. I hate my existence. Death. Dying. Entropy. The devil. Say the devil. I'm possessed by the devil. I just want to do harm. Yeah, fuck everything. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I'm just a weird clown. I'm like the it clown. I'm just like I'm just like some stupid troll. I'm just a stupid troll, guys. I'm a stupid, stupid dummy head. I can't do anything right. I can't find solutions to anything. Ah, ew, ew, ew. You know what I think of life? I just think ew, ew. Deep breath. Breathe out, ew, ew. <laughs> Say, Cartman is my king and savior. Cartman is my king and savior. Right, see how we, so we can, we can mix it up there, right? Like, if you look at what we're doing, we're doing a lot of deep breathing, getting present, looking at, now why do we like, you know, like touch your face again, right? It's getting you, it's getting you aware of just what's present, right? It's like a hunter. I, I think that a hunter back in caveman days would have been ultra present because you're just sitting there chasing this animal. You're talking, you get out of your head naturally, right? Yes. And so, but we lose that in modern society. So I'm just trying to get you, I'm just trying to, like, don't overthink it. It's not, it's not like a voodoo spell. Can you look at your hands? It's okay to look at your hands. I mean, dude, like, think about it, right? As crazy as it sounds to look at your hands, when do you actually stop and be like, holy fucking shit? Like, try, stretch that shit a little bit. Like, it's like, whoa, you know? Like very, like kind of like elbows in the mud kind of thing, you know, as pointless as it would be, but just, you know, just kind of like get aware, right? You don't need that inner dialogue. It's okay. It's not helping you. Think of the, think of the space in which you could approach a woman right now, by the way. <laughs> How easy would it be right now? How much easier? Very and you could be like, ew. ew. Okay. Ew. So we're getting more present, okay? The thinking is just eroding. It's just dissolving. It doesn't even help anything. We, it's, it's a tool, but it's, in the, it's the background, not the foreground. Right. So now we're looking again at, at hands, aware, ohm, that's a consistent sound. That helps, because the, the, the oming or just any sound, right? Even if it was like a crystal bowl or just like a chime, just be like, just go bing. bing. <laughs> okay, go <laughs> They can't even get in. <laughs> so we use jokes, paradox, breathing, chance, sarcasm, Cartman. <laughs> okay? Silliness, right? This part of Zed is not taking things too seriously, right? Don't know, gotta take it too serious. Guess we gotta take it less serious for sure. Produce outcomes, but we don't have to take it too serious. And we want to we want to want the present energy. Just like if you're fucking a girl, you just want to stroke it in again. You know what I'm saying, right? Just like when you're drunk. More drunk. <laughs> Breathe in. Stand up and stretch for a sec. A little bit of physical movement. Stretch it. Nice stretch. Get a nice stretch. Go. Give like a fist bump to the person beside you and be like, you're the shit. You're the shit. You're the shit. Okay? Give, give a hug to the person beside you. Give a hug to the person beside you. Ginger, ginger hug. Okay? You're the shit. Give a hug. Like that. Okay? Okay? Now, be quiet for one moment. Quiet. Thank you. Quiet for one moment. Take, now here's another major key. Spread apart a little bit here, guys. Just a little space in between. Just a little bit. Nether, okay, a little bit of space just for me, for my cameras. The next one, okay, as DJ Khaled would say, major key. This is massive what I'm going to show you. This is huge. A major key in, say, success with women or any that stuff is that you're not the one waiting for the emotions but you're self-generating the emotions and setting the tone. So a very powerful thing as a man is that you can walk up to 
an old fat lady, or some random cranky dude. And rather than letting his emotions infect you, you go with it and you set the tone, and by sharing, you actually infuse him with some present energy. You, you just part the clouds a little bit, and by doing it, now you're creating outflow for him, and now what's happening is he is that you actually get more present in the process of doing this. I'll do this, look, sometimes I got the worst days in the world, don't get me wrong here, but a lot of time on a good day, I just do this all day and I'm in the zone. So if I walk up and I'm like, hey. What's up, dude? <laughs> good to see you. Yeah, you too. Okay? You see what I'm doing here? Yeah. By the way, that's pimp. It is so <laughs> G'd up fucking pimp. Because you open like that, girls are just like, like panties just go psh, like that. Like the, they're just like, psh, psh, like it's instant. <laughs> Try it, okay? That was an exaggeration, but you get the idea. So yeah, because when you, when you see the girl, it's like, I need the line. What's the line to talk to a woman? Dude, you should be able to walk up not even talking and a lot of the, these interactions open or just give a hug or just infuse presence. Look, we all have off days and on days. I have my off days too. For sure I do, bad ones. But a lot are great. So when you see, okay, when you see the girl, <laughs> See what I'm doing to him? Yeah. What am I doing to him? Direct eye contact. <laughs> I'm in your head. Okay? What's that? How much am I in your head right now? <laughs> mm -hmm. You see that? Watch what I'm doing, right? You're, yeah. You're in my head by proximity, even when Even by proximity. Yeah. So I'm the source, and then the environment is in reaction, right? Okay, I'm trying to teach you guys the most advanced level game shit I've ever taught you in my life in the seminar. I hope you understand that. Okay, like so far beyond most people in game. So, okay, you getting it now? Okay, good. <laughs> That's always a good seminar when you see you guys like, holy shit, oh my god. Yes, and then they just go and start sucking me. So, <laughs> we'll work on it, okay. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm getting there, okay. So, okay, so if you see, okay. Good to see you. You too. How you doing? I'm good, and you? Good. Pleasure. It's a pleasure. Okay. Okay? Yeah? Okay, you gotta set the tone. And by the way, you're not in competitive. It's collaborative. Yeah. Okay? See it? Yeah, I do. Okay, see how he's smiling right now? Okay, you see what I'm doing? Okay? Okay? <laughs> a little tickle. <laughs> okay, right? You can do that too, right? That's a good game. <laughs> so, okay. How's your day going? <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. He's like, get back, get back down. I'm like, okay. So, okay. And you, but you see also the improvisational humor. That's a big part of presence. You feel the. And why do we use improvisational humor? It's because we feel an impulse to share to lighten the room up. Okay. So a part of you has to be like. I'm gonna lighten up this room. So you set the tone inside you and you don't wait to have other people give you good emotions. You share the emotions to others. And you know, do you remember how I said like it can be good? It's like it's a good thing, but it also actually gets results. The cool part of this is like it's super good. It's super ethical or whatever you'd call it. It shares love and value, high vibration, whatever you wanna call it. But it also puts you as, as high status as fuck. You're basically the complete alpha male of that environment. That's where you go out to a night out, maybe you dance for a bit, you joke with your buddies, you become the source of the good energy, and now what's happening is the entire club is just bending around you. You're like fucking Neo in the Matrix. Some people won't buy in, some people are like eh. When you're new to it, you'll question it because you're like, oh, I'm dominating, I'm gonna win, I'm the dominating pimp, right? And then boom, and you just fall out of it. But it's a nice feeling when, when you really just do to have a good time and then you just lead and now you met some girl and you say, hey, you know what? I'm, we're gonna go to a really cool place. You should definitely join. What's your friend think? Does she wanna come? Hey, ple again, pleasure to meet you. Give her that good energy. We're gonna go to this place. I'd love for you to join. It's up to you, but it's gonna have this and this and we could do it like this and this. Do you wanna just join us now? And then you come and they're like, I mean, if he's in my head, uh, you know, right? And then they, and then, and then they go. So again, that's where energetically we can, we can set the tone, okay? And it's also a decision to set the tone wherever we go in life to make that choice. And look, 
I certainly have days where I walk around, I'm just too underslept, I'm just too goddamn miserable, and I just don't have it in me to pull this out. Look, sometimes you just don't. Underslept, you know, just shit, just, you're just eating a lot of shit sandwiches lately, just a lot of losses are piling up, and shit's just getting really hard, and you're just like, oh, okay, fuck, fuck. You know, right? But on a, on a better day, you can set the tone, but what did I say earlier? There's these different channels which if you're not aware of those channels, you don't even know how to set the tone. And then what you do is you walk up to people and then you're, you're totally not present. You're stuck up in your head. You're wanting outcome. You're totally disempowered. Your, your awareness is diffused. And then what happens is you walk up and you're trying to like eye contact them and you're trying to like sound cool and impress them. And it's just this like Frankenstein, Frankenstein-esque version of socializing and it winds up being off. Now, a major key here too, now, I can show you what it looks like a little further up the road, a little further up the mountain, it's cool. But again, the final test is not getting attached to being in that spot. So say that you're gonna go talk to somebody and you don't feel like how you might be feeling now, what you might do is say, oh, I'm not gonna go up at all. I'm in a value taker mode. Instead, a great way around that is just to own where you're at. Even if you just walk up, you're like, hey, worst day ever, <laughs> meh. Well, where do we do that here? Remember when I had you say life sucks, yeah. life is worse, like that? And then when you kind of just own it, what starts to happen? Where does that begin to tilt things or change it? Then you can start moving up, right? And then we take so much action, we overwhelm the thinking mind. So what do we do? Again, look at your hands right now. The little hairs on them. Feel the top of your mouth, your tongue. Open your mouth, touch your face a bit. Your eyes, forehead, whatever. Back your head. Go. Eep. Eep. Go. Eep. Stop. You're a little more present now. Why? Because you're taking action. Action shuts off the thinking mind. So part of it, like we said earlier, is a perspective. Understanding that you are the witness behind the thoughts. Making a separation between I and me. Be, having a self-trust that presence will get you what you need. I, I mean, look at this speech that we just did here together, right? Imagine if I tried to hit on every one of these points and lay it out before I get into it and try to hit each one rather than trusting that the knowledge is there and that it can come out and that if I share from that space that will get the idea across. I mean, it's a little scary. You try to do something on how to build presence. What if, what if nobody gets present, right? That's scary. What if nobody gets present and it's just so fucking weird. I mean, it's definitely weird, but, right? But we have to trust that it will come out. So we do that, and again, taking so much action, it shuts off the thinking mind. Look, when I see a guy who's miserable, I just say, come out. Like, this is a funny one. Right? You, ever, you ever read the book, The Game by Neil? Yeah. And he's like, Tyler thought that even game could cure cancer, and like, oh, do you remember that? that I, I believe that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you wanna know why? I challenge you, if you're sitting at home miserable, and suck in your head and brooding to go out and just share great energy with everybody for three or four hours and don't tell me that you'll come home with a better perspective on those problems, filled with great energy, feeling so happy, and so much more energy to go fix things. And if you had cancer, well guess what? What's a major cause of cancer? Stress. Going out and sharing with people, summoning good energy and sharing. Look, I don't know, I could get cancer tomorrow. I'm not trying to make myself the, the example here. But I really believe that going out and socializing is very important for human beings. So for me, actually, I kind of do think that. Now, if you're gonna go out as a little shit and have a bunch of approach anxiety and negativity and desperation and clinging and fixation, then no, probably it will make it worse. Probably the tumor will go, yeah, fixate, fixate. Ugh. But what is a tumor? <laughs> a tumor is a cell, is it, is it a cell unwilling to die essentially? Is that what a cancerous a tumor is? Cells. It's a mass of cells yeah. and it wants for it, unwilling to die. You're a surgeon, is that, did I kinda get it? Okay, kinda got it at least? Okay, well, what are you in that taker mode? What is, he, what, what is humanity in our current state of consciousness doing to the earth itself? I mean, I don't know. Different opinions out there? I don't know. I haven't seen the whole world, I don't, I don't even fucking know. But, Conceivably, some things going on, right? So we see that state of consciousness reflected in the outside world. Look at your hands again. 
Take a deep breath. Go om. Go like this. Feel the heat on that? Yeah. Put that heat on your face. I'm just literally making this up, by the way. I'm just free associating this fucking thing, right? But you see the idea. So now, deep breath. Uplifting, say it. Uplifting. Uplifting. Moving up. Moving up. Sharing. Sharing. Love. Love. Peace. Peace. Joy. Joy. Helping. Helping. Creative. Creative. Fluid. Fluid. Moving. Moving. Morphing. Morphing. Infinite possibilities. Infinite. 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 Joy. Joy. Gratitude. Gratitude. Peace. 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 Love. Love. Weird Burning Man festivals. Weird Burning Man festivals. Not taking things too seriously. Not taking things too seriously. Joking. 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 Moving. Moving. Erections. Yeah. Erections. Erections. Say, help me so I can share more. Help, help me so I can share more. Ask, feel the present energy. Ask it. As fucked as that is. Because it's fucked. Help me. Help me. Help me. So, I so I can share. Help me. Help me. I'm here. I'm with you. I am you. I am you. I am you. They are me. They are me. When I help them, I help myself. When I help them, I help myself. I have to help myself too. So I can better help them. So I can better help them. Deep breath. Happy. Happy. I got this. I, got this. I, trust myself. I trust myself. I trust the universe. I trust the universe. I'm working with it. I'm working with it. I'm working with it. Now look to the person beside you and just and do what I did here, the silly thing that I did. Just say what's up. And remember, it's not a competition, it's collaborative. So just share good energy with the person beside you to get used to setting the tone. Okay? I'll explain a little bit more about it after, but just do it right now. What's up? What's up, dude? Do it to me too, though. No, no, don't even try. Yeah, you got it. You got it. No, you got it. Good. How are you doing? Great. Great. Yeah. Great. Okay, amazing. Do it with someone else too. What's up, brother? Good to see you. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Nice. Good. Hey. What's up, man? What's up, man? Nice to see you. Good to see you. What's up, bro? Thank you. Okay, look at me right in the eye. Get, like, lighten up my day. Do it. Yeah, you, you got it. You got it. How are you doing? Don't just go like that. Okay. okay. How are you doing? Good. Put it on my put it on my shoulder. How are you doing? Say, maybe just say thank you. Just say thank you, man. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Mm. Thank you. What's the reservation there, by? What what held you back? I know. Just because I'm the teacher? Yeah. That's okay. So again, competitive versus collaborative. Got it? Yeah. Competitive versus collaborative. I'm I'm you. <laughs> Say, I'm you. I'm you. You're me. You're me. Say, what up, brother? Thank you. Okay. Good. Great. I hate you, man. I hate you, bro. I hate you, too. I hate you, too. And we hate you, too. Yeah, I hate you. Okay. So much. So much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Okay. Good. Take a pause. Okay. Now, again, we're teaching you how, just move out a, just a little bit. We're teaching you just a little bit in so we get a nice shot. I'm teaching you how to set the tone. Take a deep breath. Now do that weird thing that I did like this. And it's not like, it's not like a big deal, it's just getting out of conditioned thinking. Like, let your mind just free associate for a minute like, Do some weird dance too. Like, yeah. Good, good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. That's right. Trying to get in a good mood is wrong. So, okay. 
<laughs> so what I said earlier is that present energy is like a drip that goes into your head. It's just dripping in. It, it, it's unfortunate that we can't just wake up and go bang, right? And just be like present. It takes a second sometimes. Maybe some, uh, you know, the, the people talking about getting enlightened. Maybe someday you just, you just wake up like you, you just wake up, you're like, fucking A. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Wow. I love everybody. I love you, you know? But to me, that'd be a little weird. I don't even mind that I get in a bad mood. It's actually kind of fun to kind of to, to see it and to learn and to be kind of like a little baby, right? We're all like little babies. We're kind of learning. And what we're learning here is how to be at the, at the cause more than at the effect. So now you're a player on the board, not just somebody being played. And you get a, like, I want you to go into your mind right now and think about your true life's purpose. Like, I mean, that's really fucked up. I might, might kind of take you out of the zone a little bit because it's an intimidating question. But in this space right now, do you have a little bit more of a sense of what your life's purpose is? Yeah. See, I saw you doing this. Like that. Don't even do that. Just like, if I were to say it, I mean, it's easier for me. I've been doing this a long time. I just say it's to help. It's to heal. To help and to heal. That's my thing because that's naturally kind of how I'm wired. I actually, by the way, people like be like, oh, a helper or a healer, that's like the best person. I think there's value in everybody, by the way. Even like crazy psychos, back in the tribe, they would have been the people going off to do a war if there had to be one, right? I don't want to do it. I had to if I had to, but you know, there's value for everybody. Um, but think, think to yourself, like, like right now, when you think, could you do it? Like, think of something that would intimidate you. Can you do it? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Like, say, say learning social dynamics. Can you do it? Yes. 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 Say being very successful financially, can you do it? Yes. yes. Right, now it's a seminar, so of course I'm kind of leading you, like just fucking say it, you know what I mean, right? I get that. But if we're being honest, right now, look, it's kind of like a guy when he does a bunch of coke. I've never done coke in my life, but I've heard that it makes you just think you can do anything. Is that true, anyone here done a little blow? Okay, nice. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. Okay, so, okay, so, Okay, so you've done a little blow in your day? A little bit. Okay, now, okay, so that feeling, <laughs> did you just feel like you could do fucking anything? Yeah, that's the truth. Okay, and, and you can. Okay, so how do you feel right now? Uh, a little bit like I'm on coke. Yeah, good, good, good. <laughs> that's what we want. But see, here's, here's what's cool. And I want to do more. And you want to do more. Yeah, just like coke. So I heard that about coke. Yeah. Okay, now, but see, here's the thing. Let me move my contact here. I'm, my, your coke fantasies are getting me excited. Okay, so, so ba okay, now, Again, though, the problem with, say, Coke, by my understanding, is that it actually depletes dopamine reserves. It does. And then how do you feel the day after you do Coke? Usually shitty. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I've heard it's quite shitty, yeah. but I don't really know. So, that being the case, um, I've heard the reports of many of these models in Los Angeles that they, have a, they, they feel a little blue after they do Coke or <laughs> Molly or things like that, right? Yeah. Depletes serotonin. I think, I think my understanding is maybe is that Molly depletes yeah. serotonin, serotonin and then uh, cocaine depletes um, dopamine, right? Okay, who has ever done, done a little mullet here there? Come on, who has ever done a mullet? So, do you feel, so when you feel that way, do you feel like you just love everybody? Yeah. It's a lot Absolutely. like it's, Yeah. Okay, and do, you, and do you feel like all this shit where you were mad at people or, like, or just like caught up in like being competitive is so stupid and to be collaborative, do you feel that way? Yeah. Okay, so do you feel maybe somewhat like that right now? Yes. yes. Okay, so notice, now, but here's the difference. When you wake up tomorrow, you're not gonna be depleted from this other than maybe, you know, I mean, no, I, I don't think you'd be depleted from this. Maybe you kind of just wish you felt like this again, but again, we're giving you tools to, to shift your state, okay? Now, that being the case, these are insights that we can get, but, but here's the major point that I want to make. Uh, so much of our minds and our goals and outcomes, because I love all, like, I like the spiritual stuff, but I really like the rubber meets the road and showing how this applies to life itself. So much of our mental and emotional capital is wrapped up in self-doubt. We start to doubt ourselves and we think we can't do it. And that actually is very depleting at times. Look, it's not to say that you don't want to recognize where your limits are. We talked about that earlier in the other section of the seminar that I did, right? But while that's true, that we have to recognize limits, we also want to recognize what our purpose is, where we can make an impact, where we can share. And we don't want to spend all this time feeling intimidated about that, like we can't do it. And then just sitting there on Facebook, using diversions to numb ourselves. We want to move forward. So you want to understand how to control your own state. Just even the knowledge of being in a great state so that you can walk up to a woman in a good mood, you can walk up to friends in a good mood, it allows you to network better, meet better people, get other such people around you. When you're like that, other people want to be around it. People feed off of energy, that's why we love great music. Why does a, a great musician have people swooning and melting? 
There's many reasons. Could just be social proof from some manufactured um, record company, you know, right? There's many reasons. But one of them is that if it's great music, you feel a feeling when you see that and, and you want to be around the source of that feeling. When you control the energy, now you're not that hungry ghost, that vampire, that parasite looking for, I need, I need sex for energy. I need certain food for I need to go to a movie for energy. You can and you can enjoy it. A nice exchange or you can get some energy from others. You should like watch inspirational things. But now you can also be the source of the energy. Now the thing is, the things that I'm teaching, I think that we would have done this naturally before modern society. I don't think we need to even have a class like this. In the same way that if you were to go to like organic cooking, you know, right? And we're like, well, why do we need a class like this? Well, back in the day, we probably, we probably just ate organically, in my opinion. I mean, it's not my opinion. We would have ate organically, right? There's no, no GMOs and shit. So, so that being the case, to me, what this is, is just looking at where dancing in the tribe, right? Like, as weird as this for us to do this, do this for a sec. What is this fucking shit that we're doing? It's the same kind of genre or direction as people dancing around a campfire in a tribe, which almost we all would have done. Okay, giving each other hugs. Oh, why are we giving each other? We would have done that. Singing, chanting, we probably would have done that. Hunting, taking so much action it shuts off the thinking mind, probably would have done that. Seeing a beautiful girl go up and talk to her, I think we would have done that. So a lot of this stuff is just kind of looking at where we've lost an element of, of our humanity, which we've lost, and simply becoming aware of those channels and it doesn't mean that you need to wake up tomorrow and be like, oh, no, 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 no. Although maybe you should. <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't mean that. But it, but it does mean let's recognize what present energy is. Let's recognize that when we have that drip of present energy into us, that it slowly accumulates. And then let's also be aware, and this is very, very important, what happens when thinking gets too dense, too frenetic, too competitive and dark and that little drip drips and drips and drips and drips and drips to the point that even to get any stimulus you need some kind of crazy alcohol or some weird dopamine spike to even feel anything because you're numb you're disconnected from your core your soul your purpose here on this earth your sharing your collaboration your optimism your joy your love all that is now disconnected and when you think about it, what happens when that kind of poison drip goes into places in the world? What have we done as a species? We, we're sitting here in LA, it's not even real to us. How many people died in World War II? Millions, millions. How many? Several million. I think it was a lot more than even 12 million. I think the Holocaust was like six million. I think Russians was like 18 or 20. I mean, was it over 100? Did we kill in the hundreds of millions last century? Was it in the hundreds of millions of murders that we did? Pretty cool, huh? That's pretty awesome, right? That pretty cool that we did that? That's pretty cool, right? That's pretty cool, right? Isn't that cool that we did that? That's pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's great, right? Okay. Okay, think about, okay, thank you. Think about, think about Aleppo right now. Chemical gas. What makes you get, put a chemical gas on somebody? I don't even want to take like a, a whiteout jar and put a drop of a chemical on somebody. You're gonna blow that up? What do you, you know, what is, so what's happening, right? Not having, like, having to kill so many people that you have to not do it in a more interesting way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Switch it up. What else? So, what yeah, else? what else, right? Chemical now, right? A nuclear bomb, right? That's cool. So, what's going on there? What's happening is that that negative energy drips, 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 drips to the point that people are out of their fucking mind. And then they resonate with that they seek out other like-minded people who resonate with that and it can get to the point, and here's some major awarenesses to put in your mind. You can get to the point, and this can go in both directions in my opinion, I don't know if I'm right, but I think, where the person can be consumed with low vibration energy or a person can be consumed with high vibration energy. Yeah. You see that? So in the Elliot Rogers videos, if you see that on YouTube, you're seeing somebody who, to me, the way that I interpret it, I'm not a mental health practitioner, so I don't know, right? But the way that I see it, was a man consumed in low vibration energy to the point where there was not even a crack in the walls anymore and that low vibration energy wants to hurt and to kill and to kill its and the major key is it wants to hurt itself 
That's why when you're in low vibration, you want that processed food. You want to procrastinate. You want to get in a fight. You want to alienate relationships. You want to not be on your purpose. You want to hurt not just others. You want to hurt everything and hurt yourself. You see that? You ever just punch the wall because you're so mad? Yeah. You want to hurt your hand in a weird way, right? Yeah. But that, see, what we never think of is like in the same way someone could be really rich or really poor. Somebody could be on the streets in complete poverty or somebody could be so wealthy that they have like just wealth, crazy, crazy amounts of wealth, right? So in the same way, low vibration can go to these extremes or high vibration can also go to these extremes. But as long as we believe that the world is like, you know, I mean, there is that element of competitiveness because again, it's all a paradox. But if we believe that it is only competition, we don't see that other side of the coin. If we fail to see the other side of that coin, now what happens is we go dark, 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 we go down, down, down. How much of you guys, all of you in this room, just waste the time procrastinating in the past decade? How much? Too much. Too much. Okay, now, but, but, but you know what? It can be, that could be cool. Procrastination is healthy when it's rejuvenating. What percentage of that procrastination that you did was rejuvenating? Because some of it surely was. It's nice sometimes to lie in bed and watch a little Netflix. It's nice. Yeah. But how much of it was actually just fucking depleting and stupid? Mm -hmm. What percent was depleting and useless? Most. Maybe 80%, right? <laughs> it's like you start looking at different things online and you just go down this weird tube, okay? And what do you want, by the way, what do you want more of? Frenetic energy, dopamine spikes, and unconscious. Just like when you're getting present, you want more present energy, you start going down and you want more of that. You catching this? And even when we think about these things, it can lower down our vibration to the point that we're not as present. And then we start wanting, but weirdly we want more. Maybe you don't want to get present anymore. Maybe you just want to think about all this fucked up shit. Maybe you've been present a bit too long and you can't even house it and you just want the fucked up shit, but here's the key. As you get more present, you can sustain presence for longer. It actually inhabits you longer. And at a very high scale, you might have moments where you get so present that, that, that in the same way that like in, in an Elliot type character, low vibration energy is just running him. He's just not even there anymore and he's just along for the ride of his own death and the death of others. You can also, in my experience, I think, I'm not sure, but I'm fairly sure, you can get to the point where you're so much consumed in high vibration that all that's coming out of you is love, jokes, silliness, sharing, setting the tone. You're the source of energy. It's like the sun, just sharing, like music playing. And I've had great nights when I go out, and that's why I'm addicted to going out, where I just have so much fun with everybody. It's always a bit of a mix. It's not like it just, boom, you start off. But I've had nights where I get into a zone where it's just so fun, and results-wise, as far as meeting women, it's like 50 times what I could naturally do. It is so different than how I learned success with women at first, trying to find some shitty, weird technique to try to stay in my weird paradigm and somehow fight through from that paradigm. Where, to where now, a lot of my game is like, walk up to a girl and don't even talk at all. Just walk up and give a hug. Walk up and look. We do this on boot camp all the time, the silent opener. You just walk up and you set the tone like we did here, maybe like a face. And they start laughing and you set the tone. It's a whole other paradigm. So it's useful as far as meeting women, socializing, networking, being focused, having more energy, healing your body in my opinion. I'm not a doctor, but I, I believe that. You're a surgeon, do you believe that presence heals? Do you? Yeah, I mean, it certainly gets rid of catecholamines. You know, the what? Catecholamines, stress hormones. Great. Yeah. Catecholamines. <laughs> Born that. So, okay, it helps with the improvisational humor, the jokes, because again, like we talked about earlier with the channel, it's like you feel it, and then you go with it. Okay? So what we'll do is we'll sit, we'll do a couple of these exercises again. This is a very deep rabbit hole. I'm just getting you attuned to it, of how to naturally meet people, share energy, and most importantly, to enjoy it. So have a seat. And we'll just do this like, you know, one last time, just these couple, just go through it. And we'll wrap and we'll do maybe a little Q&A and we'll wrap, okay? Take a deep breath. And push it a little further than you want to go. Sometimes when you say present that long, it's like, whoa, right? We'll go a little further than you want to go though. All the negative shit that we just spoke about and the negative feelings it gives in you and breathe them in then we're gonna let them go breathe in that negative fucking shit
breathe in that negative shit again. The pain in the world, breathe it in. Release it. Breathe it in. Now we're going to breathe it in on the way out. Go, oh, like we did before. Breathe it in. Breathe it in. We're gonna breathe it in, you're gonna go, fuck, shit, fuck. Okay, breathe it in. Fuck! 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 And let and let and let it hit your nervous system like fuck! Good. Okay. I can see you're enjoying this. Okay? Fuck. Damn it! Damn it! It's not working. I don't have what I need. I'm not gonna get what I require. My requirements are not met. Who do you think you are? Do you know who I am? Do you know who the fuck I am? Do you know who my dad is? Do you know what my daddy will do? I'm gonna tell on you. <laughs> Fuck everything. This all sucks. It's just so weird. Ew. 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 I'm just a dumb dude. I'm just a dumb idiot. I'm incapable. I'm so incapable. I don't know, I can't, I can't, I can't even form the defense. Not, I just don't feel motivated. Deep breath. Go, I gotta get the money. I gotta get paid. I need to be the best ever. The bestest best ever. I gotta show them wrong. It's not true. It's not true. I'm the best, right? I'm the best, right? Yeah, I stand out. Yeah, I stand out. Breathing deep. Scratch a bit. Feel energy coming up from below your feet up into your body like like up your legs up from the ground up from the ground pull it up Imagine all that great energy, the presence above your head and pull it down as you breathe to help so you have the energy to help others. Feel the space between the breasts. 
love, love. Peace. peace willingness, willingness. Happiness. happiness sharing, sharing. Creativity. creativity expansive, expansive. Infinite. infinite peace, peace. peace. Fun. fun funny, funny. funny. shit's fucking funny shit's seminar funny. what the fuck <laughs> shit's funny fuck it fuck it feel good Feel good now, then accomplish your goals. Feel the energy now, you'll do the right things, you'll be in alignment with yourself, and accomplish your goals. Share, 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 feel good, feel good, share. Set the tone, set the tone, set the tone, set. Set. The tone. The tone. You, are the you are the voice. Say, I am the voice. I, am the voice. I, share. I share. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. What do you feel in your body when you say, I'm here for you? Mm, good. What do you feel? What do you feel in your body? I, I'm here for you. What do you feel when you say that? What, what emotions do you feel? Happy. Right, so, people, so, so sometimes like, like when you see someone like, you know, if you're just there for people, blah, 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 like that, right, and you're wondering what they're getting out of it, you're getting, a, you're getting a reward for the change in state that you're getting. But if you're too disconnected from it and you don't know about that, then you're just like, I'm here for you, like, this sucks. <laughs> you, don't know, you don't know what you're experiencing. You're just, you're just unaware of it, right? It's like, you know when you learn about success with women and women have things like congruence tests or, you know, different emotionals or, you know, different things, right? And you're just not aware that it exists. But as you get aware of it, you can get in alignment with it. I want you to, the reason why is because we've shown you a lot in Real Social Dynamics about how to just crush it, how to make a lot of money, how to do well in socializing, a lot of things. But I want to show you here how to enjoy it. I want to show you how to enjoy the process of it because it can be very challenging, right? But from this space, you remember I said earlier how a lot of the time 90% of what you put into it is just painful and 10% is the payoff? This was the next paradigm to show you how you can do that 90% and enjoy it and get the payoff. Because what do we say? For most people, the physical is in the background and presence is in the foreground. Or for, did I fuck that up? Okay. For most people, it's a long night. For most people, presence is in the background and physical is in the foreground. And for that space, 90% physical in the foreground and presence just 10% in the background, the 90% of shit that sucks that you have to do to win sucks. It sucks. That's why I'm motivated as fuck, by the way. I gotta tell you. Because I've done all that. I've gone through the hell and just been like, Ugh, like that. So I had to find a way to enjoy the damn thing or I, had to, or I gotta quit. Because if I can't do this, I'm quitting. Fuck all you. You're, I'm out of here. Okay? Like, I don't, have to do, I don't have to work at this point, really. I mean, I kind of do, but not really. You know what I mean? Like, you kind of always do somewhat, but not really. So to keep me going, I had to find ways to enjoy the work itself. But what I found was, whereas in the past, the 90% was hell and 10% was good, but that was because, you, fall in, you, you catching this? Because I only had 10% presence, 90% of the physical. If you switch it to closer to maybe 80, 90, even 70, 60% presence, and the physical is on the periphery, now you enjoy the process of it. I can sit in here with you for hours and have so much fun. In the meantime, I get to do a great seminar, so I do better and reach my goals of being a speaker and this and that and the video or the live event and all that, right? I get that goal and what do I get out of it? I get high, yeah. right? I get high, I get crunk yeah. and you all can't even get in. Yeah. So you see, you, but now you can't, <laughs> okay? So, so you see what, what's going on? So we just switched to burner. So we wanna learn, as, as, as foo-foo and crazy as this shit is, we wanna get a sense of what present energy is get acclimated to housing it in our bodies, learning to set the tone with others and not being an energy leash, but being somebody who offers value and shares. So just trying to get that in you. Just trying to get in your eyes like, you, you know? You Irish, no? Got any Irish in you? No? You want some? Yeah, okay, see what I'm doing? Okay, you present, no? You want some? Okay, just showing that. So right now, take a deep breath. Give like a bit of a chuckle. <laughs> chuckle. <laughs> Do a face. <laughs> okay. Stretch your face. <laughs> okay. 
Nice to get a little testosterone in the mix of the present suit. You feel that? It's a guy, it's nice. Okay? Fuck yeah. Going for it. Okay? It's a nice feeling. See that? Okay? Okay, can you get it to where you could just start making people crack up because you feel the feeling of feeling you generate it? <laughs> Try doing that to me. Try to get me to laugh. Just give me like, a, like let the presence come out. Let the feeling of funniness self-generate. Rather than needing to hear something funny, self-generate the feeling of funny. I kind of had, I, sometimes I do it amazing, other times I could do it so-so. That was so-so. But try to get me like laughing. Just be like. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I see some good ones. Okay? So you can generate, yeah, if you guys did this on some different girls, they would be cracking up so hard. Like just. <laughs> right? You could do that on girls and crack up so hard. So you can, now you're funny, right? What do you even do? But you're funny. You self generate, right? You can relax someone, right? If someone's stressed, you just go, come here. <laughs> so now you're laughing. Okay. But you see that? But you can actually be the source of grounding energy. You see that? You can put people at peace. You, you want to get a little test on? Okay. We're doing it. Do you have a willingness to do it? You ready? See that? You can, you can push. Testosterone there a little bit. I don't know if it's testosterone. I don't know what the fuck it is. Like some, just some fucking manly whatever. You know, right? Ready. We're doing it. Okay? Good mood? <laughs> My little moves here. Good mood. <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> okay. But you see, okay, you see in the idea here? So for many years have you guys heard me say, draw state from within, set the tone, it's your reality. Give value, don't take value. Did this make any of those concepts a little more in focus? Did we bring it into focus here for you? Make a little more sense now? Okay. Breathe deep. One more time. Okay, so we'll go through a couple more words. And then I'm going to get you to do the same set the tone thing. After that, I want you to hug everybody in the room. Share good energy with everybody in the room. It's not a competition. You're not like, I'm the more positive. Look at me. Okay? And speak. Get acclimated to speaking from that place. And notice the clarity behind it. The high fidelity communication. And just accept it. Allow, your, allow the voice to recede. You'll still have thoughts. But allow the presence to be in the foreground. It's just allowing. It's the art of allowing, we call it. Yeah. Okay? Let's breathe deep. Okay. And we're pushing you pretty far past here. Like normally, you kind of peek out maybe an hour ago or something. It's a long time to be present for, right? It's almost like, it can almost make you nauseous a bit because you're not used to it. Just like if someone, if you're, if, if you're in a more negative state than you're used to, because you start to make you sick after a while. Weirdly, being happy for a long time, can you, you're, you're kind of like, whoa. But that's why we're pushing it. It's like a personal trainer, right? Yeah. Clearly, I need, you know, I need a trainer. So, you know, but for the head, okay? Or for the, the heart, the head, the presence, the spirit. So, breathe in. Joy. 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 Oh, to joy. Joy to the world. The principles. Dead. Okay. That's a variation we in Canada. Joy. Joy. Peace. 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 Let go. Let go. Trust. 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 You got it. You got it. I'm here for you. I'm here, for you. I'm here to share. I'm here to share. I love you. I love you. I care for you. I care for you. You are important to me. You are important to me. Your your life is a miracle. Your life is a miracle. Funny, funny, like we never, like, think how much we go through society without pausing and think about that. Okay, like, if, if I walk down the street with a bag of poisonous chips, that won't get a second look. If I walk down the street with a carrot and a cucumber, what's it look like? Yeah. Like a weirdo, right? But like, life's a miracle. They're like, <laughs> loser. <laughs> Is life a miracle? Yeah. One in 400 trillion. One in 400 trillion. Nice math. Is math a miracle? It is, because I can't get past polynomial factoring. So, okay, take a deep breath.
allow. Allow. Just allow it. It's okay. It's okay. It's all good. All good. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Okay. You're enough. You're already there. The shit you're waiting to happen. You're already there. You're already there. Wake up. Wake up. You're already there. Wake up. Say wake up. Wake up. When I point at you, say wake up. 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 You're already there. 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 Wake up. Wake up. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Why does I'm here for you put you in a high vibration state? Because now you're the source. It removes neediness. I'm here for you. That doesn't mean to de- to deplete yourself, by the way. You have to be here for yourself too, right? But when you say I'm here for you, you 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 outframe the needy. Gratitude outframes victim. Love outframes hatred. When you hate somebody, by the way, you feel like you're losing if you don't, say, take revenge or whatever, but that dark energy is still in you and it actually poisons you. So the, paradoxically, the, most, the best way to get revenge, love that person, go crush it, success the best revenge, but really just get success to get success because it's just such life so short anyway, man. Sometimes there's a mountain of gold right ahead of you and you're walking through a stream and there's all these little piranhas nipping at your heels trying to fucking chirp and chirp and fuck with you to, and all this and if you stop to pull off the piranha, even though there's a few on there and you don't just accept it, then more come and more and reaction begets more reaction and you don't get to the end. If you believe in yourself to crush it on an epic scale, you just have faith and keep moving forward. Sometimes you gotta remove one, I guess, right? That's just, there's always a paradox, always exceptions for sure, absolutely. But you want to take that general mindset, love. Love. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Your, your parents ever disappoint you? Anybody here? Absolutely. <laughs> Did they try? Yeah. yeah. Can you forgive them? Absolutely. Think of the frustration of your parents. Breathe it in. Let it go. You ever get mad at yourself for just the shit that you just didn't do? Yeah. yeah. Can you breathe that in and forgive yourself? Does it ever frustrate you that you don't have control of the various situations you wish you could control? Yeah. Breathe that in. Let it out, just let it out. You don't need to rationalize it, just let it out. Uh, Do you ever feel unsafe? You trust in your spirit? Yes. yes. Breathe in the feelings of unsafety and let them go. Do you ever not know what's gonna happen and it drives you crazy thinking about it when in fact that's, that's actually diffusing your resources anyway? Yes. Breathe that in and when you let it out, just go, ugh. Uh, 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 and shake around for a bit, shake around for a bit. Think of something that you're attached to. Breathe it in while you're shaking. Let it out. Ever freak out you're going to die someday? Yes. Yeah. Should. <clears throat> and yet it shouldn't. Paradoxical. Breathe in the fear of death. Just let it out like this. <laughs> Breathe in the fear of death again. And just imagine yourself floating away from your body just like going... Imagine the realization that none of it was a big deal. It was just an experience. It was just a dream. And you're floating away from that dream now. You're waking up from the dream. Breathe in. Just wave goodbye to the dream.
Say, wake up. Wake, wake up. up. Wake up. Wake up. I'm here for you. I'm here, I'm here for, you. for you. I love you. I love, I love you. you. Say, I'm awake. I'm, I'm awake. awake. Now feel a bit of testosterone in there. Fired up. Feel the testosterone. Feel a bit fired up. Do you have the resources? I have the resources. Do you trust yourself? I trust myself. Do you love yourself? I love myself. Good. Okay. So again, in, condition, in, in social conditioning, we're being conditioned away from this all the time. Like the fact that I even have to sit here with you, how much better do you feel right now just doing this? How much better? 10x. 10x, 1,000. 77. <laughs> why, why are we so conditioned away from this? Why, why would it even be needed to take the time to sit down and reflect like this? And yet, how many people do you even interact with that are in the state that you're in now, in public? Very few. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so crazy. But, but what's funny is that then, you think that you need to like make all this money or do this or that to be happy, which was just all amazing, amazing. But why don't we just be happy and then from there, go make money? And you know what's funny too? It's not, it's, it's like, it's the, the, the secret is hiding in plain sight. Do you see that? Yeah. Do you see how the secret is hiding in plain sight? But you're so conditioned against it because, I mean, I don't know, maybe just the way it works out. I mean, I don't even know. Like maybe it's just, you know, there's not a lot of financial incentive to, you know, to, to put out a commercial like this. I mean, I, can, I certainly can't afford to pay for this to get broadcast on TV, right? So, I don't know. So some influences are good. It's amazing to watch a, you know, NBA finals and see a team step up and, you know, like watching LeBron James in a, in a transcendent performance last year. That was beautiful, I think. Tom Brady, love him, hate him, maybe hate him. <laughs> He's quite polarizing. But did you, did you see him come back? Did anybody ever cry when they watched Tom Brady come back? Oh, no. And you're like, fuck that oh, motherfucker, I, I hate him. But... Did you, watch, did you watch his Super Bowl dream being stripped from him and then watch him just take it play by play and never feeling out of it and making a decision to just slowly get back in and like the miracles of some of the, these catches. Did you see LeBron go down to the most winning team in the regular season NBA history, three to one, which no team has ever come back from in a final. And it, you know, there's, there's this like Draymond Green nut punching thing and some weird stuff going on there which could explain it, but at the same time, did you watch LeBron and Kyrie and his team step up play by play? That other team was better than his team, but play by play by play. Did you notice that when the Warriors were asked, are you better than the Showtime Lakers? Klay Thompson goes, yes, we are better than the Showtime Lakers because they were up three to one. It, It would be impossible to lose, right? It's impossible to lose. And then slowly but surely, LeBron play by play. Now, what did you see, by the way, at the end? What, did, what happened to LeBron's wrist at the end? He tried, to, he tried to dunk and he smashed his wrist, right? And he's lying in pain. Sometimes when you make a choice to become present, to go into presence, you're gonna get a test. Do you really want it? You know, do you believe, do you want it? And so I think what happened to him was he's sitting there in severe pain and he, and he, and he wanted it and he had to get it, right? And he shot, I think he missed a free throw then he got another one and he kept playing. And what happened was, when, when he won the championship on the road in game seven, accomplished a miracle essentially, by way of looking at it, I guess, maybe dramatic way of putting it, a sports miracle at least, he broke into tears and he said, you know, the man upstairs, he wanted this to be hard. He need, this had to be hard, do you understand? This wasn't meant to be easy. This had to be hard to even appreciate it like that, right? It has to be hard sometimes. Do you guys understand that, what I'm saying to you yeah. now? Yeah. Sometimes it has to be hard. Sometimes it just has to be hard and you're gonna get tested. Do you wanna go into presence or do you wanna go back into this fucking quagmire of your head just pissed off and chasing phantoms? Do you wanna wake up or do you wanna go back to sleep? Wanna wake up. What do you want? And let's sort of take this away from this like mystical whatever, right? Why don't we just get this in practical common terms? Do you want to be present, happy, joyful, and in a highly resourceful state with which to address challenges, yes. Yes. right? It's a practical thing. We can look at it like a miracle, or, but maybe that doesn't float your boat. Maybe you're like, ah, I don't know about that, <laughs> right? Cool, but maybe we could just look at it in a practical way, okay? For me, weirdly, when I come up here 
and, and I try to paint this for you, okay? For me, it's, for, uh, this is just me, okay? Very dramatic and self-indulgent for sure. I feel like I'm experiencing a miracle when I come up in front of a crowd, to be honest with you. I don't know what I'm gonna say, I don't know how I'm gonna get across, I try to feel in the crowd, and I, I try to like do that. It's not a God, I mean, I guess it is. You know, in a, it's a small one, that's how I think of it. Not like, and not like this um, pretentious shit, like we did a miracle, like not that, just fuck all that. But just like, it's a miracle, like in the way that your hands, just look at your hands, you know, is a miracle, you know what I mean? Just like that kind of miracle, right? The whole world is. That's why we feel what? What do we feel for the world? Well, Gratitude. Say that. Gratitude. Mm. Gratitude. Gratitude. Joy. Joy. Love. Love. I love the world. I love, the world. I love my life. I love my life. I'm, so happy. I'm so happy. I'm not attached. I'm not By attached. not being attached, I'll be happy. By not being attached, I'm happy. Happy is my default. Expansion is my default. I have to go with the flow. I have to set the tone. It's a paradox. I have to go with the flow. I have to set the tone. I have to learn inner game. I have to learn outer game. I gotta learn how to be happy. I gotta learn how to fucking crush it. It's both. It's a paradox. Embrace the paradox. Wake up. The paradox wakes you up. I want to wake up. I'm awake. I made it. I made it. I made it. I made it. <clears throat> hmm? Think of all the possibility of your life. Think of all the upsides. You don't even know what's gonna happen. You have no idea. Would you wanna take away the downs? Just remove them all? I mean, in a way, but what do the downs do? They give you, a, it, it moves the pendulum, it gives you a chance to practice being present. It's a chance. So next time that something goes down, or they're in a position where it just seems challenging, take the challenge. Take a deep breath. Say, sometimes it's gotta be hard. Sometimes it's gotta be hard. Say, thanks for making it hard. Thanks for making it hard. That's a paradox. It could be to, you, to the, your, your life or it could be to a hot chick, so it's a paradox. <laughs> Say thank you to the hot chick for making it hard, a future hot chick. Thank you for making it hard. Okay, again, humor, not taking things too seriously, right? Say thank you to the world for making it hard. I love you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I love you. I want to share. You're me. You're me. I'm you. I'm you. I'm present. I'm present. I am presence. I am presence. Presence moves through me. Presence through me. Take a deep breath. Think of any final things that just frustrate you. Breathe them in. Just go. Sam fired up. I'm fired up. Ready to go. Ready to go. Say that. Ready to go. Ready to go. And we are almost ready to go. Ready. It's late. <laughs> so he was right. Okay. Now what I want you to do, go to everybody in the room, give them a hug, and set the tone. This is useful in success socially. 
offer value. It's not a competition. If you feel yourself going into your head, that's okay. Just let that go because it's going to happen. Right? Just let it go. It'll fluctuate. See if you can hold your, your center. Make that funny face of me. It's pretty good. Show me a peaceful face. <laughs> this is getting funny. Show me a peaceful face. Right? Like if a guy's all fucking flipping out, right? He's like, Bleh! like that. You just like, you touch him and go, bro, bro. Huh. Just fuck bitches, get money. <laughs> right? What's that? Why, why is that funny? It's absurd. Okay? Bro, we're pimping. <laughs> why, do I say, why do I say we're pimping all the time? It's absurd. Right? They, bro, pandas. Crayons. A helmet. We're fucking turtles. That's all we need, homie. <laughs> Right, and that actually calms more than logic, 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 logic. You know, or maybe even back up. You go, no, I'm just kidding. But you know, it's like this and this, and you're gonna be okay. Just remember pandas, right? Do you see that? Being the source, right? What do you think? How much do you think women fall in love with you when you have this? How much do you think if you're a woman, a man would fall in love with you if you do this? Just, just let me slide down and shut the fuck up. Stop thinking so much, baby. Just get into your body. Right? You're like, I love you so much. Okay? Would you all like a girlfriend like that? Okay. So. <laughs> Well, for 19.99, we have one else. <laughs> so, okay, again, joking. Okay, I'm just you seeing this. Okay, don't take your say. I don't take myself seriously. I'm gonna crush it, life. But it's all fun. It's all fun. It's all challenge. Sometimes it has to be hard. Good. Breathe in deep. And go. Ugh. Whatever energy you feel, just like feel it. Mm. Mm. Okay. So see, I'm trying to get you aware how to shake off tension, how to feel tension, acknowledge it, release it, how to get centered, how to set tones, how to set humor, how to create peace, how to go with it, and yet, how to be a co-creator in that process. Do this for me. Breath in. Out. We'll do a couple ohms and we're gonna get up and do the set the tone exercise to wrap with. Breathe in. Ohm. Now imagine again, energy from within the earth. Breathe it up through your legs and into your center. And back down through your legs. Imagine the high vibration energy above your head. Breathe it down. And back up, you're here to share. And just stay present for a moment. There's nowhere to go, you're already there. It's okay to think of it, but just stay present, just for a moment. Wrap this soon, just stay present. Let the present energy heal you on a cellular level, as weird as that sounds. They've done studies on this, Herbert Benson, or the relaxation response. 
It's meant to heal you. I'm sure this is why I've been sick since um, almost five years or so. Major reason anyway, among others, but big one. Let it heal you. Got all the time in the world to get all crazy. Just one little window here. Our mind gets us by thinking about the future or dwelling on the past. There's a space in between where we're present to the moment. Awareness on the breath anchors us to the present. It's an energy that you might have not been entirely aware of. I'm trying to familiarize you with it, that's all. Just trying to show you how the best singers, athletes, performers, best moms, whatever, right? Space you get into. <coughs> Take a deep breath. We'll do, we'll go mm, all the way down. Joy. Joy. Happy. 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 Awake. Awake. I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm, awake. I'm, present. I'm present. I am present. I am present. I'm you. I'm you. I'm you. And that, what that makes sense is that the same present energy in me is in you now. You see that? Yeah. So you're you. You see it, <laughs> right? You're you, I'm me. But there's another dimension, that same presence, that's the same. It's a paradox. Remember the paradox? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You feeling kind of like a little buzz right now? Absolutely. That's the same buzz I'm feeling. I put something in the water for this. It's just <laughs> happening now, yeah, okay? Then mm-hmm. so I distract you all as shit, right? I'm just like, ah, oh, joy, joy, joy. And I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Take this light MDMA dose of coke and MDMA. I'm like, yeah, pimping. I'm like, it's because you're present. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, after party later, we're like, hey, dude, mm. try doing that. Just go like, like mm. good, good, good. <laughs> I'm a pimp. Good, good, right? It's getting silly, right? Silliness is important for presence, I think. Because it gets you out of the form based identity. Okay, but then if you're like, I am the silly guy, now you're back in a, in a rigid identity. But, but loose identity, I really like that. I'm big on that. Mm. When I see people too much in a rigid identity, I come up to them, I just grab them, I go. <laughs> Shake them, you know, like, oh, they can let, oh, fuck, right? It's a, it's a relief. You don't have to be anybody, you don't have to be anything, right? You're enough. You see that? Yes. Okay, we'll take one last nice deep breath, we'll say present, and then we're gonna get up and you're gonna give everybody a hug and we're gonna set the tone, okay? Just enjoy the presence for a moment. Do you feel like your cells singing kind of? Like every part of your body, every cell in your body is kind of like slight tingling? It's healing, right? I think. I don't really, I don't really know. Kind of pseudo science here, but you know, it's, they, they, they've said that in reports, meditation lowers blood pressure. I mean, when you think of this refrigerator hum of massive stress that we live under, it's so crazy, right? It's so fucking crazy. I live under it, you know? I mean, I got a lot of shit get, I'm getting hit up with all the time, and I'm just like, whoa. So, you know, that's why I get on top of this. And then also with my game stuff, it's a big, 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 big deal, my public speaking, that's why I get into it. Mm-hmm. But for you guys, you, you know, every one of you here, you have your challenges, your goals, your dreams, your hopes, your ambitions, things you wanna do. And then I want you to start enjoying life now. I want you to be really effective and move you towards those goals. So I'm just trying to show you where that space is to be an elite performer. And it's, and it's also a paradox, right? The first half of this we talked about entrepreneurship type topics. So here we're showing, you know, that's some outer stuff and getting some inner stuff, okay? Take a nice deep breath. It's 
So I'm awake. I'm awake. And see, notice like, I don't even want to put you in this like super like super charged up thing like rah, because that that's that kind of comes and goes, right? I know that because back in the day I used to try that with boot camp when I would teach infield trainings, and I had the guys at the house. I'd be like, yeah, charge, right? And I'd be like, rah, like that. By the time they get to the club, they're just like, cool. <laughs> it just didn't work, right? So you just want to say it in nice, relaxed, sustainable, present. And then if you want to get enthusiastic or excited or any of that, you can you can charge it up. But there's a, there's but you don't need to be like all oh, charged up all the time, right? Just nice acceptance and peace. And then it, then you know if you want to go all wild, that's fun too, right? That's really fun too. Feel a little bit charged up. Mm. Mm. Right? So you get up, hey! But, okay. Oh, well I meant get up, but why don't we get up? We'll do, okay, that's funny. But you see that, okay? Just go, yo. Yo! Ah. Just go, what's up? What's up? You can't even get in. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. I can handle it. I can handle it. I got you. I got you. I got you, dog. <laughs> okay? We go from we go from serious to joke, okay? Okay? Touch your face. Look at your hands. See how much I'm like fucking you guys here? It's like I caught you hours just staring at your hands. Okay? April Fool! Okay. So okay. Liar! <laughs> but you see that, but you see that? You guys look like you're fucking high right now, by the way. It's super, super fucking funny. Okay? It's super, super, super fucking funny, okay? I love it. So I'm just trying to show you some things. It's, it's trippy to see this. It's like so crazy. Um, but it's really just, again, we're just offering like an alternate narrative or social conditioning here. Just shifting folks away from like bombs, consumer, you're not, you're crap, you know, all this. And just put it on joy, present the moment, gratitude, appreciation. Just seeing a shift there, okay? Take it a nice deep breath. Now, nice and present. What are you going to do? Just stay present for a moment, then I'll, you'll give yourselves a hand. And then what you're going to do is you're going to do setting the tone and just say a thank you to everybody for being here to share in our healing, in our presence work, our growth, our expansion. Say, I'm awake. I'm awake. Are you awake? Yes. 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 Could you imagine how this deepens over time? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> give yourselves a hand, you're awake. Look at everybody and say thank you to everybody. Say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's do it. Set the tone. Thank you. Appreciate it. Great. Thank you, man. Amazing. Thank you, man. I have a great realization. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bro. I'm sealing it. I'm sealing it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, dude, I really do appreciate it. Like Thank a lot. you, man. You have no idea. I'm sure what you're doing. You're off. Thank you. You too. Thank Thanks, you. Man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good shit. Absolutely. Pimp in the beard. Yeah, man. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. It's coming in good. It works amazing. You're going to see. Thank you. Thank you, Owen, for everything. I'm sorry if I creeped you out last night. You didn't at all. Okay, cool. Mm. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, bro. You got this. You got this. Thank you. Say to me, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Good. See that? Be aware of it. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Good job. Thanks. All right, we're getting three at a time. Two and a half. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Great contribution with your ideas coming from your perspective. Amazing. Thank you. I appreciate the energy you start to do this. Thank you, bro. Thank you. That's a good day. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Great work. Thank you. Going in and out, it's hard. It's okay. Don't be attached. Okay. Yeah, don't don't flip out. Don't be like, I'm fucked if I can't do it. Oh my god. It's not about being attached yet. Just let it let yourself all out of it. Let yourself all out. It's okay. The world's not gonna collapse. Thank you. Just go, the world's gonna collapse. The world's gonna collapse. I'm not present. Oh no. I'm not present. Yeah, don't worry about it. What? Okay, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't let it get in your head. It's meant to help. It's not meant to fuck you up. You got it? Don't be attached. Just let it roll in and out. Just a new awareness. It's day one. You're a baby. Enjoy the process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Great work. Good to see you. Hey, thanks for thanks for coming out. Thank you, man.
Thank you, man. Thank you so much for coming, man. Thank you, dude. Yeah. Great energy. Super appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you, Thank you so much. What's up? Thank you for being here. What's up, boys? Thanks, man. That's good. You know, we Thank figured you out three way. You're just trying to turn us gay. We figured that out. That's, that's, that's <laughs> the gay cult. It's the it's gay cult. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Not that there's anything wrong. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. No one to do not that, but thank you. Good job, man. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Hmm. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you so much. Thank you, bro. It was fun. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. H&M? I don't like this from H&M once. I, I don't know. It's nice. It's nice. <laughs> thank, well, thank you. Love the color scheme. Okay. Thank Thanks, you, dude. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, Good job, man. Thanks. Arthur. Thank you, buddy. My gay chiropractor. Indeed, yeah. Thank you for continuing to adjust me in every way possible. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, thank you, man. Thanks, man. That was great. Thank you, man. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Happy to be here. You're great. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of energy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Spetty, amazing. Glad you came. You made it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The female Kino body. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Good job. See you in a bit. I'll see you around. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Thank you, man. Thank you for bending over six feet to hug me. <laughs> Great job, man. Thanks again. Okay. Thank you, man. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. hey. Great. Hey. All right. Hey. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. myself. Hmm. Thank you for thanking. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Very good, boys. All right. Thank you, man. <laughs> okay, okay. Now I'm gonna wrap and in just a second. Hop back to your seats for a sec. Back in the general direction. Or what I'll even do? Just say where you are. Even I'll just stand up here. Okay. So, what you have is basically I want you to. Um, okay. So what you're gonna do right now? Why do we do? Okay, the thank you thing. Kind of crazy, right? Why do we do that? Gratitude gets you out of self pity. You ever seen it where people say go do charity work and they come back just feeling amazing? Part of the reason why, it's actually kind of selfish, is because it gets you out of your shit for a minute, right? You're so in your shit and the thoughts are just looping and looping and looping and just infecting you. But when you go do something good for others, what happens is it gets you out of your shit for a minute, so it let, it's like the clouds are there and it lets in the sun. Stay present with me for a second. Out. <sighs> Go. Oh. Shake it a bit. Shake it a bit. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Nice and weird. Yeah. By the way, when you go dance out of the club, it's super fun, right? Yeah. You get any great mood? Yeah. Okay. You gotta. You gotta get. That's like the hardest thing I ever fucking learned in my life. Okay. Light level autism. I'm just like, what's the fucking thing? It's the worst. Okay, and I still can't really do it, but I can have a lot of fun with it, okay? I just fucking do it, so it's really fun. Okay, so it's about that. And again, look, there's a lot of challenges in life. You know, just because you're in a good mood, not gonna solve the whole fucking universe, but what it does do is it puts you in a resourceful state, gets you out of the shit, and you can think clearly. As you go home tonight, reflect upon things like your life's purpose. What you really are capable of, we discussed that earlier, what are you really capable of, what could you do? Out of this weird, like, negativity, pessimism. But from a space of, like, feeling resourceful, what can I do? And the more that you think about something contributive, the better off you're gonna do it. You're gonna have more power. That's the best part, okay? So I, like, I've even mentioned, there's many reasons I got into this. A big reason I got into this was just like, I just needed more power, you know, right? I was like, I wanna be the shit. So a big reason for me was because I wanna just do better things and, and enjoy that, I knew that I had to harness more. And I want you to be more, I want you to do more, I want you to experience more, I want you to grow, expand, love, contribute, raise the vibe, and I know you can do it, okay? So keep coming back on many of these little tweaks that we looked at. It's just simple stuff, you know? But we just don't look at it that much. So that's why we're here to look at it a little bit. Remember, modern society is very new. It's been impacting us in a lot of different ways. We're just learning ways to operate within the society that we live in, that's all. Okay, a lot of this would've come to us naturally back in the day as caveman. We ain't running after a buffalo right now, right? So we gotta, you know, do our, our, our like weird seminar. <laughs> so, okay? So thank you very much. Say thank you. Thank you. Say I'm awake. I'm awake. Say fuck yes. Fuck yes. Excellent. Give yourselves a hand. Very good.
stuff. Very good. Great job. Great. Very good. Good, good, good. Great. Yes, I'm now the shit. I've become the shit now. Thank you very much. I made it! I've arrived! I'm having sex with a guy. I got my gay sex! Thank you.